the Levels Podcast. I'm Justin Horo, joined as always by the Triple OG, Widamu, Viliami, William, William, Big Willy, Mason. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? Hey, no, no, you good? Good, brother. Um, before we get into the show, this is the Round 12 preview. So we're getting into every, everything Round 12. We're also going to talk our origin teams. Uh, we've got a special guest and Joey Williams um, talking about the Body Science campaign that we're doing with our partners, Body Science. Um, we're going to talk about uh, Jacob Arthur, a story around Jacob Arthur. Uh, also, we'll cover everything Dragons related. Then we will get into breaking down the games. So, a big show, AG. Yeah, looking forward to it. Ready to roll? I'm good. And the OG's got the Millinotes happening too. He's joined yeah, the crew, so he's got all the... Now I've got to think about this shit. <laughs> now he's got all the notes rolling in front of him. Maybe it's too much. We'll see. We'll see. Let we'll us see. know in the comments how big OG goes with the Millinotes moving forward. And while you're there, get in the comments, pump them, like, subscribe, review... Five stars, Apple, Spotify, YouTube, flying, gets us going, makes us pump. 6K, chasing 10. OG. We've got to get to 10. You ready to get into it? All right, I'm on. All right, nothing but love again for our partners, Tab, and I mentioned it before, Body Science. So proud to be aligned with both of them. Um, and if you are watching now and you want to have a little break just for a minute, go on to the Tab app. Go to the Bets Friends channel and join the LPC, baby. Levels Punters Club. Me and AG have been putting our bets How are we in. going in that? Going okay. All going right. okay. So a couple of little multis are going all right. I just want to hit the big one. I want to hit the LPC. I want to hit the LPC multi. I haven't hit that this year. So uh, we're going to chase that. I've got a big one coming up. That'll and come the, great, the Grateful Eight's close. I reckon you, eight. you're getting there. You're getting there. We had, we had five wingers from seven because we had Fox, uh, who was a late withdrawal mm. uh, last week. So five from seven, not bad. I've gone a different position yeah. this week. Right. All right. So there's a little hint for what we've got coming up. Um, before we get into that, like I said at the start of the show, Body Signs and our friends, um, or our friends at Body Signs have invited Joe Williams. Here he is. We're going to tell you a little bit about his story and what this is all about. Okay. We are proudly joining our partners, Body Signs in a new collection that they've got. It's a Better Now collection. It is coincided with Indigenous Round or it's been brought upon by Body Science uh, because of Indigenous Round. So we have got Joe Williams in to, t to talk to us a little bit about it today, brother. First of all, just want uh, just want you to introduce yourself to everyone who might not know about your footy career and then what you've done post-footy and then we'll get to uh, around the collection as well. Uh, thanks, lads. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm... For people who remembered playing back in the almost black and white days, um, Joe Williams, Radri Wogaloo man, um, played footy. Uh, come down as a from the a boy from the bush. I was signed by Artie Beetson as a as a kid. Uh, signed at the Roosters first, went across to South, spent spent majority of my career at South, and then had a little bit of time at the Bulldogs and the Panthers, um, and then went away from went went away from playing footy. Then to in the uh, what a lot of players are doing now went into boxing um and had 16 professional fights did you have 16 I had 16 fights yeah oh, man. I, knew, all right. I knew you, yeah. you, you got into boxing but I, I didn't realize you had that many <laughs> yeah I, I had 16 fights i i enjoyed fighting because it was not big blokes like you flying yeah. at me like it's guys guys my own size you know body um, weight the, my own size but i i think i fought i fought at 63 kilo so a lot hell of a lot like, i played at, at, i played at 80, 80? yeah okay yeah um yeah, had 16 fights, uh, won 12 of them, won the WBF world title twice and a WBC Asia belt, which is... That went under the fucking yeah, radar, didn't yeah. it? Yeah, a little bit. Like it, I nice guess it was part of the No Limit days like now. Hey, plenty, plenty of money. Yeah, Georgie yeah, Rose yeah. behind you. Made yeah. plenty of money back then. <laughs> yeah. uh, not enough money back then, but yeah. um, made it, for me it was boxing and walking into a boxing gym and I, I was training with a bloke, I'm sure you know, Johnny Lewis. Yeah, um, legend. And Johnny's just one of those guys that help you to believe in yourself as yeah. you know as much as i love footy and 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 love playing footy and all that and i was i was haunted by some dark stuff mentally and emotionally throughout my entire footy career um and boxing just i never set out to be the world's best boxer because i i just didn't have i didn't have that dog in me that 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 killer instinct i yeah. was i was a bit pretty as a boxer probably too pretty as a footy player sort of thing you know i didn't like getting dirty and as a boxer was the same um and you can't sort of so for me it was it was more about 
control on what was happening here mm. um, throughout the boxing stuff. And, you know, it, it helped me do that. And it was it was managing some some pretty pretty challenging demons that I that I experienced right throughout my life since I was a kid, and um, I, I honestly say that boxing taught me more about life and about myself than everything else has. Because um, yeah, it just it teaches you to to dig in, you know. It teaches you to put your hand up when things are tough. And as a I guess as a a little pretty boy halfback that didn't like getting tackled a great deal um i didn't have that you know yeah. i was i like playing before the line and kicking and that sort of stuff where boxing taught me how to get bite down on my mouth guard and keep swinging yeah um and you know throughout the the, the journey of mental health and and you know I, I finished up boxing and then i haven't really had a struggle in in transitioning from careers because i went straight from rugby league into the boxing and then into the mental health game um and i've been i've been touring around you know, hundreds of communities across the country and throughout the US and and, and New Zealand uh, around working and helping people to, to understand their mind and what they go through, what it is that they experience and what they go through. Um, the conversations of mental health are a hell of a lot louder now than what they were yeah. in 2014. Well, that whole 2000s really, wasn't it? It was. That was our sort of era, the whole 2000s. Yeah, it, was. it wasn't really... I wasn't spoken about at all at no, training. At all. You wouldn't, all. You wouldn't even – but um, is it because it was just so – like society is – it's really prevalent now in society with depression and all that kind of stuff. It was still around back then, but no one no one talked about it. Was well, it did no one have it? it? Like is, all of I, a sudden is I, it like – I think people had it. It's just that – We just uh, fucking masked it? We didn't know what mastered? it was. Mastered. That's the word, yeah. right? Yeah. Is that we didn't know what it was and I'm sure within the gym, I'm sure within the training park, you guys had noticed – some players that had a bit of what we called head noise. Yeah. We just thought it was head go. noise, wasn't it? That's it. <laughs> right? you, the, that's exactly what it is. A kind way to put it, someone had a bit of, you know, had a few demons, you know. That was I think that was yeah. the kindest way you'd say. You sort of knew that he was He's got a few issues. He's got a few, yeah, issues, a few issues, issues, that kid. Yeah. Like it wasn't like social media's played a big part in that, obviously. Yeah. Because people opened up more, people were telling their stories of, you know, if just say if you were struggling in years past, you wouldn't really see it on, you know, we weren't on our phones like we are now. So it's definitely more prevalent in social media and people opening up and therefore it opens up the conversation, doesn't it? Also, I think it's it's harder to hide. Like when there was no social media, social media is such a challenge for so many people because it's you're on 24-7. Like you, you, people can get at you 24-7. I, I really feel for kids today because, you know, if you got bullied at school when we were growing up, you got bullied from 9 to 3 and you went home, it was an That's escape. True, when true. now you – Kids don't escape. So you see mentally and emotionally why kids are struggling with things so much. And traveling around the place and 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 thankfully across the world with what I do, I, I also understood a very different narrative to what was happening in our communities, in, in the First Nation Aboriginal communities. I, I understood that there was a very different story that was being played out. And it wasn't just challenges with our head. Like there was there was all sorts of challenges that we have mentally emotionally but but they'll be played out through other different behaviors you know and we all know those behaviors that you know the challenges around substance use and 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 challenges around violence and things like that so i started to delve a little bit deeper into what it is and started and i went and did some study as well and and i realized that and it was after i was the keynote at the the world indigenous suicide prevention conference where the conversation was different we they weren't talking the whole room native indigenous people from all over the world weren't saying We've got a problem with our head. It's our head that's challenging us. We we're saying that we've been challenged by the trauma that's impacted our peoples worldwide from colonization. I was sitting on. You're talking on, hundreds and hundreds of oh, years. Yeah. yeah. You know, I was sitting on country, generations and generations, yes. right? I was sitting on country with a special old fellow named Paul Gordon out, out in Brewarrina. And he said, I want to challenge what those doctors tell you. I don't believe that you're mentally ill because I don't think that it's your mind that's sick. I believe it's your spirit that's sick and deeply spiritual people said we need to heal our spirit by being on country and learning about who you are and learning about mm. the history of who you are in the country and the animals and, and everything that comes with it and learning about your stories. Um, and with that, you know, I, I started to change or a little bit of what I was doing throughout communities right across the country. And, and I'm lucky enough to be in hundreds of communities across the country, you know, thousands and thousands of people where I, I – I, I, I talk predominantly, I guess, I because I, I have a stronger connection with with 
our First Nation communities um, because I understand the narrative or the story that we all live that's the same. So um, that old fellow said, it's not your mind that's sick, it's your spirit and you've got to heal your spirit on country and, and I've been – Do you believe that? Yeah. It's quite heavy. Without without a doubt. Yeah, do you believe that? Like yeah, just say, if you, doubt, if you were um, to talk to a young inner city – Indigenous kid who's 15, who's troubled, who's had a lot of trauma, generational trauma, trauma, as you're saying, do you think that would fix it? Him going out on country, being with the elders, being, you know, like in that in that environment, do you Mace, think that I've, would honestly fix the, the issues that he's been going through? Mace, I've seen it happen too many times to not believe it. Right, okay. I've seen it happen too many times to not believe it, mate. And and in communities where I talk about going back to to places where they're from or, you know, you get a kid that live, lives yeah. in the inner, inner city, the chaos and the noise that yeah. comes with the inner city and it just don't stop, right? And then you go back to the bush where it's a little bit quieter and everything slows down a bit. What? Why so many people are challenged mentally and emotionally these days, it's not because everything's changed. It's just that everything's gotten faster. Mm. And why so many people were challenged, and this would be a controversial comment, why so many people were challenged during the lockdowns of the pandemic is that they didn't like sitting still with their own head, mm. right? And they had no choice but to stay in their own house. They had no choice. They weren't allowed to go anywhere. And when you sit with that and it's loud, yeah, and you at gotta times you've got you to sit with it. Yeah, It's an uncomfortable place. Yeah. So sitting out on country, you've got no choice but to stare into the fire and things start to slow down for you and you start to understand a little bit more about who you really are. Because when you understand who you are, it tells a much deeper, bigger story. Yeah, that's deep. That's good. Well, speaking of the stories, the Better Now collection through Body Science, how did that come about? Have you always been... Um, you know, I know Mace has been an ambassador for body science for a, a long time. Have you, have you just sort of jumped on with this collection or have you been part of body science for a while now? No, with the, with the body science family, I guess, for a long time. Like it was since I was playing footy yep. back in – Pico, because Pico's made South yeah, supporter. Yeah, Remember South that? Man. So back in, in 07 um, when they come on board with South and it's sort of just been one of those things when – then when I was boxing, I started to get some – some kit and some gear and stuff like that, um, yeah. supplements and things like that, which were obviously beneficial for what I was doing, um, the recovery stuff, all that. Yeah. Um, so when we talk about the new collection, you know, Greg and Pico come to me and say, we, we, want, we want to do something. We want to, we don't want to be tokenistic, Joe. Like, and, and having conversations with these guys over a number of years and then we have diff different podcasts together and, and Greg said, Joe, I actually know nothing about your community. And there's a hell of a lot of people that know nothing about our community but do a hell of a lot of judging about our community. Mm. So <clears throat> I said, all right, um, you know, with, with the work that I've done over, you know, a few hundred different communities across the country, um, I've pulled a program together which is about launching a, a new academy for young people um, and we're calling it a better now and it's the Our Way Academy because we're going to do th things our way. Not yep. being told what to do, you know, so many different, uh, so many different ways that you get funded come with stipulations of how you do things. You know, if if our ways worked for thousands and thousands of years, then what we did worked. What we're doing now is not working. Mm. You know, how have we gone from a place in over? 500 separate nations in this country, two and a half thousand different dialects of language, with no word or meaning for suicide. What does that tell you? That it wasn't there. Yeah. So how have we gone for 100,000 years with zero suicides in our communities to now some of the highest suicide rates in the world? It's because we're struggling to live in a new way of life. Our Way Academy is about helping people to understand who they are, why they are, and connecting them back to the old ways through, you know, keeping them in school, getting doing what they're doing, but helping them to understand what and why their behaviours are the way they are. And we, 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 we're calling it a better now because we're sick of saying, we're sick of hearing we're doing this for our future. This is what's yeah. coming for our future. It's happening now. now. It's got to happen now. We're doing it? it now because we you know why? Because, you know, funding cycles and, and government cycles and election cycles and all that, you know, sometimes we can be used as a bit of a pawn in different things. We're trying to create a better now for our young people. Do you think a younger Indigenous kid, like a 15-year-old inner city kid, is a lot more conscious of the fact of what's happening now in society, in Indigenous sort of like situations, you know what I mean? Or just say when you're a young 15-year-old from Wagga 
are you were you more conscious of the fact what, what was happening to your people you know with the stolen generation and, and the trauma and all that did yeah. you know about that no obviously you had to educate it but does a yeah. kid now does he understand what you understand right now or are they just so far disconnected from it no the, ba the basis of it our people are so smart mate we, we, because we've got lower numeracy and lit numeracy and literacy rates doesn't particularly mean that we're not smart Mm. It just means that we're struggling to live in a completely new way of life. Yeah. Right? You go and, you know, five generations ago, you start to learn a new language. It's going to impact you right now. Yeah. The benefits, I think, of social media, but also has some challenges as well, is that everything is so accessible right now. So everything can be shared on social media. You can type in Google and, and start to understand and learn about massacres, learn about how people were just shot on site. Yes, I'm saying. So just say when you were 15, there was no YouTube, there was nothing. Now you can – Get onto this and just say if you're a young Indigenous kid, you could get all the history. I'm not saying it's the right history, but all of, about your people and the history of, of you know, Indigenous people. Like, do, do you see a lot of kids doing that or do you see a lot of kids just going, oh, it is what it is? You, you see a lot of kids, I believe, and this is my perspective and understanding, you see a lot of kids that are lost. You see a lot of kids that want to know. You see a lot of kids that want to – want to start to believe in who they are. I walk into every school that I speak at and I say, all right, who's Aboriginal? Everyone puts their hands up. I say, who's proud to be Aboriginal? Everyone puts their hands up. I say, tell me why you're proud. Mm. And they don't know why they're proud. Yeah. You know, we have the oldest continuation of human existence right here in this country. And people can't tell me anything about me. I can tell you everything you need to know about white Australia the history of this country and how that was formed because that's everything I learned at school. You can't tell me anything about mm. me and my people and how it's been here for mm. 100,000 years. So if I ask you that, why are you proud to be Aboriginal? What would, what would be the answer? Because I come from a lineage that didn't give up. Right. Because people don't understand that, that there was an attempted genocide on our people mm -hmm. that was forced to exterminate us, right? And just not far from here, there's statues of Governor Macquarie where Governor Macquarie was quoted as saying, paraphrasing here, but we shall hang the natives from trees to spark fear into their relatives' eyes Jeez. and shoot on sight and things like that. Like, like this isn't me making it up. Mm. This is all documented in the journals of the people who – founded this place that was already here for 100,000 years before that. That's crazy. And Mate. people wonder why it impacts us, mm. you know. So what we're doing, you know, the, the, benefit, the, the benefit with what we're doing and, and how, I'm, how I'm doing it, we're starting with young kids, you know, kindergarten to year six, five-year-old through to 12-year-old and working on the identity of who they are, helping them to be strong in who they are teaching them about their history, teaching them about why they are the way they are and helping them to understand it. There's no secret that 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 many of our people in, in our communities are challenged by different behaviours, but behaviours tell a story. We want to understand what the story is so then we can change the narrative of what the behaviour is. Speaking of telling stories, where we're in, uh, we've got the artwork on that you've been working on uh, with Body Science and a guy called Dave Hartley. Um, tell us a little bit about Dave Hartley, how long you've known him, the artwork itself, and then some of the work that goes in. What is art? Yeah, when you educate people about the artwork itself, yep. you know, like everyone thinks probably might think it's just a few little dots here and dots there and all that kind of stuff and circles. So educate people on that uh, Indigenous art. It's important, isn't it? You know, and, and, and I, I can only speak from from my understanding of it, but but everything. And what this actually right. means. That, that that story there is, is, is pulled together beautifully by Dave um, and it talks about, and I, I guess I, I almost feel a little bit embarrassed saying it and, and probably should come from him, but, it's, but it tells my story of what I've been doing Around hundreds of different uh, hundreds of different um, communities with different people, and 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 trying to educate on on how our people lived and sustained for thousands of years. That's pretty sick. And that's pretty well, cool. That's, that's pretty cool. cool. That's don't be like, humble about it. That's mad. <laughs> and, and we don't keep it humble. On this humble it, mate. Don't humble yourself around me. Just, just that's, <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> awesome. You know, he's he's told that story. Um, you know, through the artwork in in how um, I've been trying to encourage people or educate people about a better way to live and how we want to do it now rather than waiting for what's to come. Um, 
And, you know, the, the story as well, he, he always talks about how um, people say that they're listening, but they're actually not, you know, and, and it's evident in report after report saying certain things around, you know, how we can heal our communities, but the rates of incarceration get higher and the deaths get younger. And, and you know, we can, we can talk all day about that sort of stuff, but it just shows plain and simply the ignorance around our people live sustainably with this earth, not to the earth. That's the way we live now, with this earth for thousands and thousands of years. And there's so much to learn from it. Well, mate, um, obviously love having you in here, Joe. Would want to chat can more I for ask, sure. No, I'll ask one more question. Yeah. Just in regards to the NRL, you're a young Indigenous kid coming from Wagga at age 18? I come down at uh, just 17, yeah. Um, are the NRL doing enough? For the young, bringing a young kid from just say Moree or or Dubbo right now, just say the 16, 17 year old kid smacking him bang in the middle of Sydney. Is there enough infrastructure around him for him to survive and be and have the right people around him? Does the NRL do the right thing? Like that's a big that's a that's one thing I'm um, curious at. I can't. I probably can't talk to that directly because I've I've been fairly disconnected from it for for a while now. Um, we can always do better if we've got kids yeah. going home. And get yeah. homesick and things like that. It's probably an indication that we can do things better. Yeah. Um, how we do things of pulling kids away from communities and just lumping them in the middle of big cities, it's not going to work. They get homesick every yeah. single time. You need you need strong family structures. We come from family structured people. Uh, we need strong family structures and strong uh, mentors with what we do. I think and Dean Witters does a really good job on that. Yeah, I was with Dino uh, today actually doing some work um, with the School to Work program um, with, with, a, good man. with a bunch of bunch of First Nation kids from, from all around the state. Um, and it's just about, again, bringing them away from their home and, and giving them accessibility to, to, to big platforms and, and training facilities and things like that and starting to learn and understand. Some of the work that, that Dino and, 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 and the others have been doing for, for a long time, I think the conversation around what's best for our people is a developing conversation within big structures. Was it there when I was playing? No. Is it better now? I believe it. Do you think it's better because of the fact that there's been a lot more Indigenous players that have retired right now? So just say the, the generation that played before us, the 90s, who was that? Was it Chalk? Was it Jeff Hardy? Ricky Walford? There wasn't that many Indigenous – Cliff Lyons, you know what I mean? They, there wasn't that many Indigenous role models that – you know they weren't professional players, so they didn't know what, what 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 we know. I think just say with Dino and a heap of other players, I think they're a lot more passionate about it because they were those guys that come back down. They, they were the guys that got taken – not taken, brought from the country yeah. down to the city. So I think it's a, probably a little bit more comfortable with those guys now. Well, I think the big thing about that is that is that we can always create better structures – for kids away from their families. Yes. Right. And whether we're bringing Polynesian kids over or we're bringing Aboriginal kids down or Torres Strait Islander kids down from the bush, we can always create better structures to help them to feel safe. Here's a, one of the biggest stats around, or the biggest um, uh, noted stats around depression and anxiety and things like that, is, or well being in general, is that the state of belonging is one of the key factors in somebody being challenged by mental health. If you walk into a system where you don't feel that you belong, that's a massive trigger for these for, for, for young people. So if we can create systems or places where they feel that they belong at home, then we're going to create safer structures, yeah. culturally safe structures. Um, and I guess that's one of the prime uh, messages that we want to say about the Away Academy is that we're creating culturally safe and culturally responsive structures so it's safe for kids to go into schools That's good. where they feel like they're at home, where they feel that like their culture is embedded to who they are and why they are and help them to progress as, and be the best version of themselves. Awesome, Joe. Anything else, Mace? No, that's we good. Well done, up? mate. Well done. Um, Joe, uh, love having you in here, mate. We're going to start doing more guest podcasts as we get in. This is more like preview, review, but definitely get you in for a bigger chat in the future and uh, keep doing great work. Where are you off to? Where are you off to now? Back home to Dub Vegas. Dub Vegas. Dumb Vegas. Dumb Vegas. Uh, mate, uh, thank you. The boss is a Dubbo girl. Uh, yeah. I, no. uh, my wardrobe's there and uh, she wears the pants. <laughs> <laughs> I'm told. We'll see, we'll see you in a couple of days right, anyway, mate. Eh? Have a safe flight, bro. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, boys. Okay.
Okay, OG, great chat there with Joey Williams, yeah. mate. Some really good information. Um, we had a good chat to him even before the podcast as well. Definitely a guy we want to get Fuck, back in. man. He's smart and highly educated. Mm. It's a dangerous person right there. Mm. Plus, he'll punch your shit out of him. He's at 16 yeah. fights. I yeah. didn't know that. That went under the radar. Right? I, I assumed he had the no limit sort of like of back in the day vibe where he did a lot of the uh, like you like yourself. Right. He did the rugby union, rugby league ones. I remember he did yeah, a couple of I'm fights. Not sure, but are you turned I, pro like proper? I, like, didn't I, did the, I did the, the fight for life stuff. Like that's basic. That's not nowhere near like turning pro like the like the Sunnies and the Gallons and all that kind of stuff. They took that shit serious. But um, 16 fights, 12 wins. Great story. Highly educated brother. I'm yep. very uh, – I'm proud of him. I've known, I've known him for like 20 years now. 20 years. Mm. He, hasn't had a, he hasn't had a drop of alcohol for 18 years. And he said one of his last ones – he said ones his last one – Was with the OG. Was with me at Sapphire. <laughs> so, yeah, you're you've welcome. T- that's good. You've turned a, you've <laughs> turned turned a couple of people I've to sobriety, <laughs> so good on you, OG. All right, before we get off the Indigenous players, <clears throat> I set you a little task that OG was Indigenous round. Yep. Uh, we're proudly um, you know, supporting it, obviously, at Levels Network. I wanted to go through and name our top three Indigenous players of all time. So many good ones. Keep it nice and uh, nice and sharp. Nice and sharp. Nice and sharp. Let's start with number three for you. Number three is GI. I just think we're talking players as just like their their talent wise, right? Yeah. I just don't, I don't think anyone touches that guy physically in any era. Mm, yes. Any he, era. He transcends. He any transcends era. any era. And if he played in the 70s, the 80s, or 90s, he'd be an immortal right now. All right. Now he's still right now. That. He's still that. He's the they don't have to worry about what he does on the field. You know what I mean? Like he's the best out. I think he's the best, the greatest outside back of all time. Mm, that's that's how cool. highly I, that's I put cool. him. Because yeah. there's been some. And you played with some fucking guns. There's too. been some outstanding outside backs, but he's he and this is not just indigenous. This yeah. is like the whole history of the game. How many tests you play with G.I.? I would have played about 20 with him yep. easily. Yep. And he's scored some outstanding tries, some of the ones that like last minute efforts. And just like, he's the he's that dude, like you just get the ball with G.I. Yeah. When you're playing for Australia at the top level, there's still <laughs> you're still going, get the ball to G.I. Early ball to G.I. Get him out. And I played against him in the Origin Arena and uh, he dominated um, – yeah, he's he's class, man. Yeah, he's just he's six foot five, hundred and six kilo. Mm. Moves like run a four forty better than you. Forty better than everyone. <laughs> he could just move. Not many people can. Beautiful. Too, OG. He's a beautiful. He's a beautiful mover and a great friend. He's going to be on the show very soon. Yeah, but no, man, I can't. I can't go past him. Number two. Let me let me get. I'll go. We'll go. We'll go. We'll go. I'll go. My three. So speaking Sorry. of beautiful movers, uh, one of my favorite I know, players. I know, I know, I'll come. Who you got? You're gonna say the pearl? No, oh, oh, no the pearl. I like no. I like the pearl though. Oh, now you got me. Sorry, go, 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 go. All right, so my number three is I grew up loving Steve Menzies, and you can't message, you can't mention the Beaver without Uncle Cliff. You can't. Cliffy Lyons, the silkiest of the silk. Oh, the best, <laughs> the greatest ball player who ever who ever played the game. Yeah, I'll when put the, him down. He's he's that. When they talk about instincts and indigenous players just having instincts and know how to play in the game. Generally, the conversation starts with Cliffy because Cliffy was the OG from uh, even from I guess from my era. Uh, I grew up sort of the watching the nineties, and my dad yeah. played in the nineties. Played against Cliffy. He's got some hilarious stories with Cliffy that makes me love him even more. Yeah. Now that I've got a little bit older and I'm a bit of a degenerate, so um, <laughs> I love the way Cliffy. that he was the, be able to p- perform off the field, yeah, while also performing on the field made him my, my number three. Your number two. All right, this is not in no particular order, right? Is it? Well, order? for me it is, but it, what, okay. Yeah, well, not, my number two was is JT. That's my number two. Tell us yeah. why. He's I just think uh, knowing that kid as a young little skinny kid from Toowoomba that he moved he moved down from uh, from Toowoomba to, to the Dogs in two thousand one, watching him develop as a human and as a man, as a father now, but as a player, it's not. It's, he's no one thought that anyone would come near Joey. He's in, the, he's in the same conversation as Joey now. Easily. Easily. Resume-wise, probably trumps Joey. Sing, yeah. Yeah, because of the I'm, – I I'm, think, I'm with – I think – like, I can't split him. I can't split Joey. Because if you're a young kid, if you're – just say if you're 25 years old, you're probably going to go JT because you see more of JT. It's like a LeBron Jordan thing, yes. right? But if you know – if you're about 40-something years old, you've seen Joey right at his peak between. like yeah. I have. I was blessed enough to play with both those guys. I'll both. Joey was my halfback for half my tests and JT was for the back end. 
So not bad. You had a good run. I had, so I, oi, so when I fucking had me at training for half half back play, I fucking know what a good half back look like. <laughs> yeah. I know how he plays. Yeah. Um, mm. So JT. Very close friend. Both these guys are very close friends of mine. Yep. GI and JT. I'm not, I'm not being biased at all. I just think they're easily look the top ten greatest players of all time. They're in my top ten greatest players of all time, regardless of indigenous. But JT, how he rebuilt himself through the injuries that he had. People don't understand that at the start of his career when he was mm-hmm. at the Dogs, 2002, three lower leg injuries, shoulder reconstructions after shoulder. Can't tackle. Too small. Too this. Too slow. No. 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 Goes up the North Queensland and becomes arguably the greatest player to ever play the game. Mm. Definitely in the conversation. Easily the com- in the conversation. Yep. All right, yeah. Future immortal. No, JT for me, mate, yep. as well. So I couldn't say it any better. You've played with him. You've done it at the highest level. You've won comps with him. Perfect, mate. And I dare, I dare say he'd be uh, up in the top three for a lot of people as well. Number one. Artie Beatson. My number one as well. Yeah. Big Artie. Big uh, Artie. Yeah. <laughs> we're on the same Because I just think, I think, I think every, it's what he did. Mm. It's what he stood for. You know, and his uh, big indigenous brother, how he played in that era, very racist times in Australia. I think he's the first Australian, first indigenous captain. Um, he started Origin. Started Origin, Origin is the yeah. fucking pinnacle it's, we're of about that to game. That's what Origin. we hang our hat on. Hmm. He started that shit. If he didn't punch the shit out of Mick Cronin, Origin wouldn't be mate versus mate, state versus state. It wouldn't be it. It would be. It would have been like one of those exhibition games, and no one would have give the shit. Would have went back into the, the, just the normal Winfield Cup or whatever it was called back then. But he started that. I had a bit of time with uh, Artie at the Roosters, and um, so I always had some good conversations with him. And he was always very, just very humble and a generous man, and always was. What he did for the indigenous community, when he was alive, is untouchable. Yeah. And, uh, paved the, he paved the way. He paved the way. I'll just add the greatest compliment that I can ever say is when I watch back, and this is the dogs of dogs back in the day, the OGs, proper OGs, quadruple OGs. And people used to like, you know, you, you, back in those days, a little bit looser with the rules, right? So <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> no one ever fucked with Artie, man. No one fucks with him, mate. No one fucked with Artie. He, you know was, he was a different fucking you know, Artie was a different one, beast. one of the best squash players of all time. <laughs> yeah. You know that? He had a nice touch, did he? He did no fitness. Yeah. He did squash. Yeah. And he'd fuck you up. Yeah. Oh, so I'm Artie was play. the reason I got to the Roosters as well back yeah. in the day. He, he recruited me. So it's not what he did on the field. It's not what he did on the field. It's what he did off the field, coincided with his greatness on the field but like you know, these other players you it know like mesh. the JT and GIs they're better players but they're, they're in different positions it's what yep. he did he paved the way he's a you know trailblazer triple OG trailblazer for the indigenous soul. kids that we have in this game right now we've got some fucking really good ones yeah. and some of them are going to be part of our teams right now so OG let's get into our New South Wales Queensland mm. team do you go I'll, I'll hit you with this right do we want to go just through all of New South Wales and compare them as we go down or do we want to go Fullbacks for both teams. We can go New South Wales and Queensland fullbacks. You want to do, do it that way? No, let's go for New South Wales. Or New South Wales. Wales. All right. So your fullback for New South Wales is Teddy. Teddy. Easy. Tick. I think that one's. You know, there's been a lot of chat. We we talked about it. Yeah. He's I just a skipper. Don't. Enough we, said. Yeah. Enough said. All just. right. So the so there seems to be a lot of conjecture around the, the one wing spot. Brian Toto, one of them. Toto is a lock. Who's your Who's your second? Campbell Graham. Campbell Graham. Campbell okay. Graham. I like him because he's six foot six. Yep. He's. I mean, I know Tua Lungi's pretty good in the air, but I'm not sure who they're going to pick. I'm not sure if Tua Lungi's playing I at that think, high level. I don't have him in my team. There's Do you know what I mean? Hit. Like, I'm not really. I don't really care what what team Queensland pick, mm. but I know if we have Turbo and Graham on that right edge, it's a fucking going to be an assault yep. through the air. I just think he's played himself into the team. If anyone's in form right now and you've got to pick on form, it's Campbell Grant. 100%. I think and he's I, a lock. I think he's, got to, I think he's got to be in. And uh, if he doesn't pick, he doesn't get picked as a travesty. Everyone's trying to say Fox. We If Fox never got injured, I think Fox will lock in. Same. And I just, I, I'm, I'm spewing that he's he's not fully fit. It's a long series. It is a, it is a long got series. Got eight weeks left. You know, um, I really want him in the side. I think he should have been in the side last year. Mm. That's last year. It's all done now. But, um, you know, he had a great start to the year and just what he brings off the field as well. Yep. All right, my winger, Stephen Crichton. I think yeah. he's been uh, one of the more clutch players we've talked about. Toto and Crichton. Yep, Toto right. and Crichton. He's performed at the highest level now for a couple of years. Back-to-back comps, clutch for Samoa in the semis, finals, everything. He's just 
he's just it. Yeah, like if you think of big games, yeah. like when they played um, Souths this this year as well, that game that Souths just won in the Hooter, three tries. He steps up in the biggest games, man. He's that dude. And plus, I'm looking for that aerial assault too. And I'm going to place him. I'll start with straight getting straight in my centers. Um, Latrell's a lock. My other center Left is center. Campbell Graham. I've got Campbell Graham. No turbo for me. Yeah, a, right. Yeah. So that's fair. Turbo? That's fair. I'm, yep. I'm turbo all the way. Yep. He has to be either injured this week or, you know, he's getting picked. Yeah. I think just uh, not because of what I'm echoing what Gus is saying, having him in the team, the aura that he has, it's Tom Trebojevic, you know what I mean? He's one of the greatest players in our game. I know he's down on not form, but I mean like just, you know, his body's sort of, you know, it's not 2021 fucking turbo at the moment. Yeah. But I think he could sort of replicate that at right centre. That's so, that. Keep so saying it. He's not. He's not doing that much running. This is my concern, and I'm doing this. Like I think sometimes, when it comes to this decision, decision, people know like, obviously what his top is, and if he's fit, he's yeah. arguably he's second like person, top three maybe, player, maybe even the first person picked in front of Teddy Cleary, whatever. Yes, I understand what Gus and you were saying about because I've never been a part of Origin camps, but I know players that have been there and speak about what it gets in there. I'm thinking about. If he goes into camp and plays, and then he doesn't perform, what? Mm. How mentally that that could scar him right now. They so back my the position is, I still need to see him play consistently better at club level, where he's not thinking about it as much. Because I think it would have the reverse effect for what Gus is saying. If he goes into camp, gets around the boys, obviously you know he's yeah. gonna he's gonna go after it. What if he goes after it at that level? Because Mm. Mate, you know it better than anyone. You can't not go hard. No. It's not like you can just feel your way into a game and he potentially either gets injured or he can't go and then that deflates him even more so because you're going to need him. This series is going to be so fucking close as per and I think he's going to be required more in games potentially two or three if he's got more confidence and he's he's got yeah. more. Yeah, I think you, I understand where you're coming from. I understand where you're coming from but like I think the selectors and that have so much faith in players like Tom Trebojevic. Yep. Not to even have that mindset. What if? What if? It's just like That's just true. fucking pick him. You pick those you guys and open. they let him go. That's fair, and I understand and, that. If and that I think it's experience as well. In game one, you always go for experience in game one. So you're going to pick Campbell Graham and Crichton. Crichton's played one game. What? What do you need experience more so in game one? Is it all the nerves? It's just the happen? nerves, mate. Yeah. yeah, it's the nerves. Tommy, Tommy, don't look nervous in any situation. No. Campbell Graham's already played for Australia. Right, so Graham hasn't played in Origin, a whole different kettle of fish. Start and center, whole different kettle of fish. Crichton hasn't played wing in Origin. He hasn't played wing for a while. Mm. So different. It's a different sort of kettle. And if he's they so want, versatile, man. he's, he's going to come to you next very, year and play fullback. Very, the dogs. He's very, very versatile. I'm just yeah. saying, just I'm just saying for the first game, go yeah. with experience, okay. a little bit of experience. And you know, like Tommy's not <clears> going to let you down. He's not going to loop. What the thing is, he ain't going to lose you the game. Yeah. I can't knock you on it. I yeah, really can't yeah. knock you on it. That's just I'm my trying, decision. Yeah, but, I, but I totally get what you're saying. But yeah. if it was anyone else, anyone else, and, but fucking Tom Trubojevic, I'm with you. Anyone else and I'm not 50-50 in doubt in my yes. decision. Yes. Yeah. I'm I, like I, I'm doubting not. You're still down. I know. That's what I'm saying. If it's I'm, anyone I'm, else, bar yeah. that guy. I he is that dude. Uh, five eight. Luai. Luai. Same for me. Who who else is there? Nico is the Nick, one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I get it, but like Nico plays seven. He's, he's played he's played fullbacks. He's versatile as well. In this day and age, the the big dogs they're pretty versatile, mate. They could be. He he plays he plays a different type of seven too, right? So he doesn't play that traditional mm. say on one side. He floats in and out, he goes, so he yeah, can plays first receiver. I get he plays it. Second I, receiver. I think Louis. I think Louis. 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 Oh, so well, I'm with in. you. I agree. Nico but Hines. I, he's just trying to put water. I'm just putting no, but I understand where yeah. Nico Hines. And, and, and you're going with combinations, get it? Yeah. You know, and saying the combinations that they got, the seven and six there, it's been there for two or three years. It's been there for what, five years out of Penrith? Yeah. So you just got to go. It's not broke. It's not broke. Yeah. All right. Oh, they lost last year, but that's not broke. They've, they're proven fucking. Mm. Uh, they lost the fucking. But oh, I can see people in the comments going, it's not broke because they lost last Lua year. Need, they lost by a fucking charge down Lua right in the depth. needs to nearly get man in the match, but in game one. I agree. He's he's a player in New South Wales who's under the most pressure. I agree. And I, that. And I think he loves Dwight. that shit. Yeah, and, and I, I think, think he probably need to get it. All right. All right, Nathan Cleary, lock. Yeah. All right, front rowers. Who have you got? Payne Haas 
And Tom Trebojevic. Jakey. I mean, <laughs> Jakey Trebojevic. That's Jakey, right. <laughs> Jakey Trebojevic. Same. Why? Oh, Payne Haas. I think his stats and the actually way don't that even have playing, to say anything about wife. Even, Payne. I'm not even no, no, Jakey. Jakey, because no concerns with Jakey coming back from a couple of weeks either. I don't have it with Jakey no, because none. he's not a. He'll get a through. Defender. If he gets through this week, he's fine. Yeah, uh, he's an Origin player. I think they learnt their lesson last year, not playing him game one. How I loose agree. that ruck was. I agree. He tightens up everything. He's an Origin player. He's the Nate Miles. Yep. Of, of New South Doesn't Wales. Doesn't matter what's he gets happening there, at Manly. I don't give a fuck. Put him in the middle. And he's even playing good this year at Put Manly him too. in the middle and just let him do his thing. Bang. He cuts people in half. Bang. Fucking living. Payne Haas is Payne Haas. I want him to be the most dominant forward in this. We need him to be... He hasn't dominated Origin yet. He hasn't yet. He, he hasn't, hasn't, hasn't he? He needs a stamp. But he hasn't been playing to this level. I know. At club level, gone Put into an Origin too. Put a big stamp on this series, big boy. Mm. Absolutely ruin it. He can ruin that whole pack, man. He can, he can ruin anyone if but he wants it. But fuck it. You're talking about Queensland, man. Yeah. They, they, can, they figure that shit out. They've got some good got some dogs in fucking Queensland as well. Proper dogs. You're none. I'm going with Cookie. Well, okay. I'm going Coruscant. Why Cookie? I just think... He went through a hell of a lot at the back end of last year. Yep. Lost his starting spot. Yep. He ended up finishing the year pretty good. Missed the World Cup spot. Big. Missed the World Cup. Big. I, th- I think that's gave him a spark and this that's, year too. He could have went either way. This is resilience, kids at home. Mm. Didn't fucking drop his lunch. You know, he's a late bloomer, that's yeah, why. Didn't have a sook. Didn't go, oh my God, I'm going to you know retire from rep football and all this kind of stuff. Um, he just went, I'm going to fucking go back to the lab, work on my game even more, my de- deficiencies or whatever he had to work on. He's worked on it. He looks like Cookie from fucking two or three years ago. So I think he, I don't think he lost his spot. I think it was a combination thing last year they were going for. Yeah. So I just think I'm sticking with, he is a fucking, people, under, people better understand. They better go have a look at some of his origins. His defense. In the last three years. The defense is outstanding, man. But he runs. Some of his individual tries, the setups. He, it comes up when Cookie's on, that team is fucking on. Mm. New South Wales is near unstoppable when when Cook's on. Appy's a different sort of cat. Yeah. He's different. Yep. All right. So the reason I'm going Appy, I just think it's going to be a nice little confidence boost for him. Like obviously going through a tough year, starting to play some good footy now for the Tigers. I think when he gets back around the boys – Jerome, fucking Cleary. I've got like I've got a heavy fucking Panthers contingent in here because mm. they're just proven winners, man. And and Uppy is not that far from removal, man. And I think he'll just grow a leg. And this is where I'm with fucking want to go for combinations too. Mm. But I know that Cook and Cleary have he deserves a it. Cook, he deserves it. I, I can't has, knock you on it. Yeah, but just because they played together for three or four years in this Origin side, I'm like, that's enough. Yeah, you don't have to play week in week out with that bullshit like fucking combination. That's that's nothing. No. If you play, if you played. 12 or 13, 14 rep games together, being on kangaroo tours, you're fucking boys. Yeah, instincts. Uh, Isaiah Yo, lock for lock. Isaiah Yo, yeah. He's a lock for He's lock. He's a lock for the lock. All right, back row, who you got? This is probably the hardest because I'm, yeah. I'm thinking about combinations, which players play where week in, week out, where Cam Murray's in my back row and so is Liam Martin. Yep. Which side do they play? Liam um, Martin can play left, Liam Martin can play right. Cam in Murray past, can play left and Cam right. Cam Murray has played right side yes. because Angus Crichton's normally been on the left. Yes. So I dare say Liam Martin would play left if he plays and then Cam Murray. But either way, both versatile enough. Both, have both versatile enough and this yeah. is why it goes to the bench as well. Yeah. So the bench will be – I'll get my, yeah. my back rolls first. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So Liam Martin, I'm going Hudson Young. Oh, to start. Huddy Young, yep. I'm going Huddy Young to start. I think his form has been outstanding. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. For the last couple of years, I think he's uh, he's obviously a smoky. He's probably not going to be in the team. I know I've heard Freddie talk a, you know, a little bit about him, but he brings that X factor that in big games like this, when he's shit that doesn't happen, dog in shit, him too. shit just happens for him. He's got because origin you know why? He goes after it. But he's got origin in him. Well, I couldn't have Jackie White because he retired. Yeah. So I've got to get me a fucking dog from Canberra, and i got one. And they're playing there. five in a row. All right, your bench, 14, 15, 16, 17, please. All right. This is where I got like really fucking twisted because I want I want Appy, but I'm like, I want Nico Hines. Can Nico Hines play nine? Can he play anywhere in the back line? Yes, he can. Does he deserve it? Yes, he does. Has Appy played himself into it or out of it? Fucking probably not. Mm. But I'm so going with going? Nico. I'm going Nico too. I'm going 14. with Nico. He's my 14. Yep. Ola Kowatu. 
I need a big body. 15. I need a big body who can play on both going. edges. Yep. And he can play in the middle and play big minutes. I want him to back into the halves, get on their big boy in the middle and just fucking go ferocious. Yeah. Unleash. Unleash him. Don't put him on an edge because, hey, back there in origin, you don't play edges. You don't do all that sort of shit. You just yep. get in there. Maybe maybe in good ball, you get a little bit wider. You put your plays on. But I just want the big man getting in there and playing aggressive both sides of the ruck. I like it. We're two from two. Junior Paulo. Three from three. Why Junior? Junior Paulo. I think Junior's self explanatory Junior Paulo, he's, either, he's right. either starting or he's coming off the bench. Yep. But what he adds with his ball playing skills, his big minutes, his big body, quick play the balls, and his experience, and just an all around fucking machine, he fucking picks himself. Picks himself. Picks himself. He was, last he's in everyone's team. Yep. Hudson Young. Okay, swap, because I've got Cam Murray. So Cam Murray's off the bench right. for me. So we're pretty much we're fucking not far off. There we go. Apart from bad. the fucking right edge, the the, the centers and that. Else. Yeah. So um, the only difference is obviously the big outs for me were Turbo Fox if he was fit. Yeah, Fox. Tony yeah. Staggs having a great season. Probably just just not too far. <clears throat> if there's a, an injury to happen, maybe and Turbo's not right, I think Staggs would be the next center picked. Um, Cookie was a big one. Angus Crichton. You know who I think is smoky to play some part of this series? Spencer Lingu. There you go. Fuck, I heard he was nearly a lock until he'd done his nuts. Oh, yeah, he did his, yeah, he did his, his, his um, testicles. <laughs> he ruptured his testicles. He ruptured his nuts. Sorry, sorry, kid. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, brother. Oh, sorry, fun. Biggles. Six, <laughs> six weeks or so. Could be back. Hey, could be back for the oh, fucking final. And I heard that he was he was going <clears> to <throat> come off the bench. Yeah, wouldn't and surprise me. And if he was... If he was fit, he'd be my Hudson Young. And I think another – well, I, I would have had Kaloa Mantangi over Huddy Young and he wouldn't have made the bench. So Huddy Young yeah, would have gone out yeah. of the team because I, I, I like Keon. Like Kaloa who else – like, honestly, who else are you going to pick bar Hudson Young on the bench or Cam Murray? Well, just save Angus those Crichton, back rolls. Do you think? Gus needs a couple more games. He will, he will, he will play a part in this series. Yep. Whether it be game two or game three, just not game one. I don't think he's ready for it yet. I'm not even taking the piss here, but fucking he's been a part of it before. Ryan Madison's, you know – No. In and around, he's been in and around. He's been for a playing good. Years, yeah. I, yeah. I think he's been playing good. He's probably in the t- in their in their twenty two somewhere because okay. he's so versatile. Yeah, that's what I mean. I don't give a shit about it. We, we take the piss out of him sometimes if yeah. you call him a lemon. Yeah, <laughs> you call him a lemon. But that was, that <laughs> I'm was joking. It's fucking taken. We, hey, we love you, Matt. Hey, Matt, we love you, mate. Love you, bro. We love, love you, bro. You know that. But he can fucking play, and I, and, yeah. and I bet he's one of those guys. Hey, at the end of the day, you get ruled on your Origin career. Yeah, and he's played Origin. And what would you say about it? Mm, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So he'd be one of those guys. He'd love to get another chance. Chomping at the bits. He'd love to get another he'd chance. He'd want another chance. Yep. So. All right, Queensland. Let's go. Number one. Caelan Ponga. Caelan Ponga. Caelan why not, Ponga. Why not Reese Walsh? Because of last week. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Because of last week and what I saw. Proved enough. When he just went fucking, all right, let's go, boys. We're on. Fucking... I just saw, I saw enough. Yeah. I saw enough. I, said it all. I had him I mean? anyway. I had him regardless. So I just needed him to come back and play. I just needed him to be on the field. His situation is different to Turbo's for me because, you know, it's concussions and, yeah, you, you worry about the head knocks, but I've seen him play at this level. Now, More I've got more recency bias than I do have – with. I have more recency but bias with Kalen than I do with Tommy at this level over the last couple of years. Wingers. <clears throat> um, Selwyn Cobbo. Yep. Same. I'm fucking mixed. I'm Tua Lungi. Yeah. I'm Tabu Fido. Yeah, all, all, I'm Hammer. all him. I'm Hammer. But then you're... Oh, no, There's also Xavier stuck. Coates. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm trying to figure it out. Well, I'm, I'm not, I'm not really going to put that much thought into Queensland yeah. because I don't care. Okay. But if you're picking on form, yep. you're picking the Hammer. Yep. And he did a good job against Turbo a couple of years ago. What side wing is the Hammer? Well, he would have to go left because Cobo's been playing predominantly right. Because look at that right edge of us, Turbo and Campbell Graham, both 6'6". Six, six. Well, that's why Tabuo Fido's That's why I it. think maybe he won't even be in the team. That's why I'm thinking Tua Lungi. Mm-hmm. Has it, I, I think he's played himself back in. Magic Murray, he's in good form, eh? Yep. Yep. I, I can't knock you for it. It's the hardest, it's the hardest yep. uh, position to pick in the back line for me. Gags. I've heard, oh, yeah. I've heard, ru- I've heard rumors he's not going to be there. Who? Gags? Yeah, I've, yeah heard, no, I I have, I've heard Hammer's got the jump on him for centers. Fuck but that! <clears throat> I hope they do it. It was from a journal. I hope so they do it. It's, it's from a journal. Yeah. All right, my Fuck. centers are Valentine Holmes and Dane Gagai. Done. Same. Done. You can't. Like, you can't. I mean, at that level, let's, speaks let's, for let's itself. Just, let's just like pull, pump the brakes on Tabuai Fido, right? The big Hammer. He's been going good for the Dolphins at fullback. Mm. 
Do you know what I mean? Like, it's a different role at centres. Like, he's not – I mean, obviously, it's it's shortened. You know what yeah. I mean? He ain't going to get the ball all the time. So, you're seeing a lot of him, 25 touches, you know what I mean, in a game. Yeah. That's going to dwindle down to probably less than 10. And then he's going to have those play two or play threes coming out of that coming out of that right corner when we jam it down their throat. Tough carries. And they're tough fucking carries. And you're going to pick him up and fucking drag him back 10 metres because he's 85 kilo. Yeah. That's going to be the plan. I'm not going to say it's happening. That's the plan. So, they, so if you're New South Wales, you're like, please pick the hammer. Pick him. Ooh, I don't know because, about please. Hey, I don't know about please on the hammer. Hey, if you're new, if you're New South Wales, hey, I'm not. Hey, I'm new, I'm, I'm ex New South Wales. If you're New South Wales as a player now, yeah. you're like pick him, please. Okay. Because if you're that right edge, you're Cam Murray, you're Jake Chaboyevic, you're fucking Turbo. You're picking him up. You're getting under, under hooks, bang, one leg up, driving him fucking back. He only weighs 85 kilo. I want to get you in the sheds, mic'd up for Levels Network. It's talking Fuck. to fucking Tommy before. Yeah. Fucking, <laughs> and before Tommy, like, Tommy's a gun defender. Yeah. He's fucking underrated because he's a fullback. When he's in that line, that is a big body. Yeah. That is a big body. Graham, that's a six foot six cat there. He's yeah. big. They're big. Even if I, even if Tommy, like just say for my team, so I've got Campbell Graham and Steve Wright and so still both. Still six, six two, motherfuckers, huge, man. Huge, big humans. Do you know, right, so like, halves, halves speak for themselves. Cam Munster, Daly Cherry. Sorry, I'll just go back to, sorry, to yep. Gag Eye, to yep. Gags. Gags. You've got to pick Gags. Got to pick Gags. You don't disrespect him like that. Game one, the hammer you've got to pick Gags. Yeah, I just, I just can't do before. it. You put, put the hammer somewhere else. I'm not sure if you're going to put him on the wing or somewhere or else. Or he doesn't like that. make it then. Or he just doesn't make opinion. it for game one. Yep. That's it. All right, Cam Munster, Daily Cherry Evans. Yeah, done. Tick, tick. Front row. Tino and Big Papa. Same. They do it, man. I had I had Big Papa out two weeks ago, but now the last couple six of weeks. Six weeks you did. I've changed but, but, my mind. But, but, but I understand when you said it six weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Because he just come back from injury. Yep. Right? But I said the Big Papa will get fit. Look how fit he looks right now. That's good, man. The big boy, the big mullet. It's yeah. fucking flowing. And I just think about Post like. Post contact meters are there. Hey, he's make there's that, that right foot's back. It's all about timing. He's fucking times his perfection. One of the best origin forwards of all time. He's in there. And Tino. Big Tino. He's, no, he's, he's there. I mean, like, you know, everyone's saying Welsh. Well, it might, Welsh might be on the bench. Mm, okay. Hooker? Hooker in 14, Ben Hunter. Personally. Harry Grant doesn't personally, matter. Personally, I'm like Harry Grant. Yep. But I understand with their combinations and how good they and how good they work. Harry comes gotta, off the bench It's got to be well. Ben Hunt. Yep. I agree. Because Ben Hunt doesn't have those legs. He's got he, – I'm not saying he's got old legs. They're mature legs. Mature. he got mature legs. Rennie. <laughs> You got really mature legs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back row, uh, we both like Paddy Carrigan for lock. Lock, lock for in feeder, Paddy Carrigan. Left side back row, Kafusi right side. Same as me. I can't. I can't. How did? How did? Undeniable at the moment. How do you Dad not? Feeders. And Kafusi speaks for himself. It's defence because right side. What, yeah. what does the right side back row do, Hoss? Bangs. You fucking bang. Defends. And you fucking kick chase and you do all the little things <laughs> that pressure. nobody fucking cares about, the people in the stands, but guess who cares? You fucking outside backs and your middles. Mm. And that's all you want the respect from. Mm. And that's why he's fucking highly respected. Carrigan, let's see how he goes, man. Because he ain't, he ain't getting behind Big Pain Haas and the Flegler. But he got man of the series last year. I know that. So I know. it's not he's, like he hasn't performed in his, his first series. He performed. I know. I, I, I understand. And we put him under pressure. Paddy Tough Carry. Get he's got to get. And he fucking got it. We got a jersey. He got, he got you in the jersey. He got me in a fucking jersey. And, and I want to get him back. Any jersey, somehow. Any jersey. We'll come. We'll come up with something. We've got to get him somehow. But yeah, I, I, I rate him highly. <laughs> Next week we'll come. I up rate with him something. highly. But I don't think they game plan for Paddy Carrigan last year. I reckon they disrespected him. I reckon they just went, no, nah, fuck, we've got to take care of Papa. For sure, they wouldn't have game plan. They for wouldn't have fucking cared. Sure. He was gonna, a, he was they would have said player. he's a worker and he's this, this, he'll he make tackles. He started on the bench in game one. Yeah, but he fucking come on, start mm. ball playing, offloading, hitting holes and fucking smacking everyone. Yeah. So no one fucking expected that. So he smacked him in the mouth, yeah. taught him a lesson, respect me. Yeah. The bench, I've got Welsh, I've got Harry Grant. Fucking the next two. Jai Arrow. Yep. And I'm missing one more. Who you got? All right, so mine Talk is Harry me. Grant. He's oh, your boy, he's got to be in it. The dog of all dogs. Oh, my God, Ruben Cotter. Yeah, Ruben Cotter. Ruben, that's it. Yeah. And that's that's a fucking side right there. All right, so I've we've both got Grant and Cotter. Um, I don't have Welsh. I originally had Welsh in my team three weeks ago. I've taken Welsh out. Uh, that was tough to do. That's hard, man. He And I don't have Jai Arrow. I've got Jersey Flegler. Oh, fuck, I've got the Flegler out. No, I swapped Welsh for Flegler. <laughs> okay, sweet, you're back with the me. The jersey's back. I've, to I've talked you into jersey. Yeah, 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 because he's fucking killing it. And Sorry. I've got, got Tommy Gilbert. Ooh, you like your Gilbert, I don't like you? Tom Gilbert, man. Gilbert. I love Tom Gilbert. Gilbert, great. <laughs> I'm Gilbert Arenas. <laughs> Gilbert Arenas. <laughs> 
<laughs> I just can't like. I reckon he the his form this year. Yeah, man. In particular, Felice and Gilbert. Bro, he's I'm, I'm high on what the Dolphins have done this bro, year because he's got of Gilbert written all over that Kifusi. head. He played well last year. He played game three. He played yeah, well. Eighty saying, minutes in the back row. Yeah, some some guys are just built yeah, for Origin. Yeah, he looks like Queensland. His head Queensland screams Origin. Knows how to pick him. Yeah. Look at fucking. <laughs> So guys oh. that I got were unlucky. Well, I guess not unlucky because they're well. In, Welsh you know, is unlucky. Champ. So I got Walshy. Obviously, was a big one. Murray Talangi for me was a big one. Xavier Coates was another one in the front row. Welsh for both of us. The horse, bruh. I think he'll play. Fuck the horse, bruh. Oi, I think if the horse was some, in the twenty-two. Yeah, he'd be happy. I think he'll be in the nineteen. How fucking red will he look with Maroon? <laughs> <laughs> with fuck, that'd be like fucking fatty He's Vaughan. Look redder than fatty BC, fatty Vaughton vibes. No one has been in. Name the last proper redhead for Queensland. Brad Myers. Fuck. <laughs> I reckon you get a bit more honey. He no. Not, yeah. No, no, sorry. Big horse, red. No, yeah. No. Brad Myers wasn't full red. red no, he, he wasn't was, full. No. So burgundy. fucking. <laughs> Fucking Brad, Fatty Vorton. Right, yeah. He's, he's, it's Horsper is fat. Horsper like. is like fucking, yeah. he's that. Like, yeah. I can. Mine's got away of it a yeah. little bit. It he's wasn't burgundy. like, fuck, he's got red hair. Yeah, he's burgundy. Nah, that's fucking Horsper. That's that. Ron. Yeah. Which one's Horsper? The fucking guy. The reddest out there. Cunt out there. The reddest motherfucker out there. <laughs> <laughs> the mythical creature called Horsper <laughs> with the fucking 19 on his back, but he's starting. <laughs> um, the two starters for games two, I believe, or play, well, starters last couple of years. Big outs, Kurt Capewell, Jeremiah Nanai. I think mm. both of them could feature at some point. I think I, I wouldn't even be surprised if um, Kurt Capewell starts. It still depend on, obviously, like Queensland won, right? Mm. And they're the most loyal motherfuckers of all yeah. time. So we'll see how loyal they are. I think Capewell Because of the fact that fucking David Fafita has play, is, is reaching his potential. Yeah. And he missed, out, he missed out last year because he was playing shit. Bottom line. He, yeah, they've he gone, was, he work on this, this, and this. He didn't deserve it. And he deserves it now. <laughs> so they've just been, they've been, no disrespect to Capel, they've just been waiting for Fafita to arrive. Yeah, yeah. Capel's rock solid. Good. Capel's, Capel's rock, rock solid. solid. You can put him in at, at any side, but I'm just saying. Capel's like, not going to lose the position, put it that way, right? Someone's got to take it from him. If I'm in New South Wales, I'm like, please pick Capel. There you go. You're getting firing up the Queen. Nah, fuck like it, it man. Oi. I love it. I love it. Hopefully they've cut that shit up. <laughs> oh, I'm the fucking problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into the topics for this week. My just fault. a couple, just a couple of club level mace before we get into the preview. Yeah. Uh, Eels captain Clinton Gutherson has thrown his support behind Jacob after after post match abuse from a fan. Um, I'll tell you a little bit. I don't know if you know about this um, story, Mace, mm, but Arthur started in Parramatta's loss to Canberra and on Saturday in place of Mitchell Moses, who had a concussion. He was abused after the game. This is coming from an uh, Eel supporter who was standing by, who wasn't the person who was you know, getting after Jakey. But after the game last night, we went down to see the players. As they came out, <clears throat> they were happy to give their time, sign stuff and take pics. The fan wrote, There was a group of dead set fuckwits there. When they saw Jakey come out, they started bagging him pretty hard. The supporter then revealed another sad moment after that follow. So after they'd pumped him for a while, I think Guth, someone stepped in and mm. told him to fuck off, or even you know, some of the fans did. And then a friend of the the person who is um, uh, recalling this incident said that you know someone went to go ask him yeah. for an autograph and it, which he responded, "Are, Are you sure?" sure? So <clears throat> look, at the end of the day, um, Mace. I understand that there are things that come with rugby league. You get hammered every now and again. I've been hammered my, myself in the past, but this stuff on Jakey Arthur has gone on for too long. He's uh, I've, I've known him for a long time now. Brad Arthur was my assistant coach at both Parramatta and Manly. He was always a great kid. I've seen him um, recently, the last couple of years. Do I think <clears> – <throat> I want to get this right. I feel sorry for him in the sense he, he doesn't deserve this. Is he the best choice for Parramatta when Mitch Moses is out? I honestly believe he is but because I don't know what else is there in the in New South Wales Cup. Does he have deficiencies and is he – uh, an out and out first grader for me right now no he's not but does he deserve to be fucking hammered like he has been by these fans and get him booed by his own fans before he even comes on I think that's way too far mate and uh, I just you know Laurie Daly felt like he um, he got a bit emotional when he was talking to me. I, I, I feel for the kid I, I hate that people need to understand fans need to understand it's just a game the guys that you see on TV are humans feelings emotions everything like that the amount of shit that he's copping is unfair. 
Do you know, what I mean? like mm. I just think it's wrong. You're out of pocket there, whoever you are. Um, just pull your head in. You don't have to act like that towards towards a young kid like that. he's out there trying his ass out. He's not trying to lose games for you. Mm. He's getting picked in first grade. You know, he's he's, he's Parramatta loss. Fucking big deal. Why do you take so personal out on a young kid like that? Well, this is the thing, mate. This I don't understand. These guys, fans need to understand. These fucking kids, these fucking humans, they're humans. NRL players are humans. They go back. What do you think? They just go on their fucking, in their car and fuck off home or whatever. And they sit in their shed. They sit in the shed after they get beat. And it's the most demoralizing feeling Nothing that you worse. can fucking have. Do you know what I mean? Let alone you... Oh mate, in the in the stands, abusing this young, abusing these players. Not just talking about this young kid, Arthur. Like anyone abusing these players, they sit down when they get beat. You think they, they go in there and just have a big party and get on the piss and just go, "Yay, it's awesome." They're sitting in there for fucking like half an hour to an hour, even more. Some of them in their own lockers after they have a debrief, and it's the fucking worst part of the fucking night. Some people, worst, cut, some they, people carry it all the way to captain's run. They the next can't. Week. They can't get over it. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, and that's and that was even when I was playing you before, before you got people like, fucking shattered. Yeah, we didn't even Let alone cop and shit for some some fuckwit fan. Do you know what I mean? Like, are you sure you want his signature? Shut the fuck up, I would have said. No, no, sorry, you missed it. So Jacob asked, this is how fucking rattled he is. Someone asked him for his signature. And Jacob asked if, are you sure? Oh, was, Jacob said, are you Jacob, sure? Jacob said. Oh, the poor kid. He's don't that, fucking ever so, like, don't, don't do that, kid. He's, he's, he's that keep beat your down. Fuck, he's keep that your beat head up. From, keep your head up. Yeah. Don't let him ever, ever fucking get you to go that low. Mm. You know what I mean? And that's that's shame on them, man. I mean, yeah. I mean hey, he's no fucking Andrew Johns. But he's still playing NRL. Yeah. You're a fan. Shut the fuck up and be a fan. Just support the game. Yeah. Support the kid. You're a Parramatta supporter. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, come have on. Have your just, opinion. You can have your opinion. Have your there's opinion, there's man. social medias. There's blogs, and you don't need to be fucking smashing a kid right in the face as soon as he's finished. You can you can disagree with it. You can fucking ride into the club. You can do all these sorts of things. You don't need to scream and you know at what, someone's they're, face they're, as they're, they're picking fucking on leaving. poor Jake. You know why? Because he's not the biggest bloke, is he? Yeah. And he's, yeah. he's, he's not, he's not about not, that. He's, he's not, not He's not that fucking guy. <laughs> if it was a front row, they wouldn't be doing say it. that Junior Paulo? Yeah. If it's, Junior Paulo wasn't playing well and he wasn't Junior Paulo, Balor, with his – with his, uh, let's let's give Widemu Greg as an example, mm. right? Big Widemu. Big Widemu wasn't having fucking the best of times the last couple of years at Parramatta. He's in and out of first grade. No one's going to say shit to him because he's a big front row. Yeah. And Paulo, like, yeah. And, mm. and even if Junior – Big Junes was there, mm. he ain't saying shit. No. Yeah, if he's in the facility. He ain't saying shit. Yeah. None of them are saying that. They're picking on him because he was by himself. Gutho, what, did Gutho have to come in? Yeah, I'm not too sure. Gutho well, someone had to come point, in yeah. because this, he was just by himself, you know what I mean? Because when they after after the games, these guys are so – even after they get beat, they all go around and sign everyone's autograph. You know what I mean? They're out there for fucking 45 minutes to an hour, some of them, longer. Guys like Fox are out there, hour and a half, you have to wait. Hmm. You know what I mean? Sometimes. And, like, he would have been doing the right thing. He could have easily – Easily, you have the option of just going. You know what? Nah, fuck everyone. Straight into the shed. That's yeah. your little. That's your little bubble. That's your safety. That's the safety thing. What when you are vulnerable is when you choose to go around and mm. do the right thing by the fans. Well, that's what the fans. Yeah, saying. that's what I'm saying. You're doing the right thing. He doesn't have to be there. He's played his game. You've paid his money to watch him pay to watch him perform. They got beat. Whatever. He can go in the sheds. He has every right to and just go fuck it. And then he'd be, you know, obviously that's when the, you know, you're fucking down and all that kind of stuff. No, he didn't. He manned up. He went around, did all that kind of stuff, and you still have the audacity to yeah. pay out on the kid. You piece it sucks, of shit. It sucks for the fans that that do want want to get Jakey's. Like that sorry. are real fans, proper OG fans that don't yeah. turn when shit gets tough. It sucks for those fans where Jakey is not even sure about signing. It. So Jakey, keep your head up. Um, for the next Don't let that weeks, shit mate. get to you, bro. Don't let it get to you. Just head straight back in. All right. <clears throat> the biggest news of the last couple of days, the Dragons have sacked Anthony Griffin. OG, oh, oh, it's been they, coming for a while did. now. Yeah, it's official. It's done. He We've, got told yesterday morning just before um, he had obviously gone in. At 8 o'clock in the morning, he'd gone to go into training. Called it, he found out. You called it. I mean, well, I don't think not, you have to be fucking Nostradamus. Yeah. yeah. I, it's not something I can claim as in like, fucking no one said that. You're time. like Paul Kent. You got fucking, you got a journo <laughs> set like 360. Don't, call, don't put me on Kent. Oh, no, don't fuck you. You're not on his level. You're not on his level. Put on Kent at the minute. Fucking hell. Sorry, what about all this shit? <laughs> How many times like some people are going, why don't you have a Kent? Yeah. like, mate, so I, th I don't want to explain this properly. First of all, it's going through the courts, so there's That's legal issues, and it's allegedly at the moment, and, you know, whether you agree or, or agree, 
disagree or, or you don't like someone, when it's going through the courts, there's no reason for you to get involved. Second of all, everyone's everyone, you know, people say to us, yeah, well, he'd, he'd do, do it, it to you. Be, two wrongs don't make a right. Exactly. Just because someone does something fucking shit all the time doesn't mean, you know, when we see someone in that position, we want that to happen to them. It's, no. it's a fucking ugly for us. To come down on Kenty now with the situation, the alleged situation, would mean that we'd want the incident to happen. Exactly. So why would we, why would we want, like, why would we be happy and why yeah, would we want to be coming exactly. down? Exactly. It's an ugly situation for everyone involved and we don't want anything to Well said. Exactly. Uh, Dragon's a new coach, though. Uh, yeah. Obviously, now the uh, ball is in Jason Ryle's court. Yeah. Uh, he's got all the leverage. He knows the Dragons want him. Um, there's unrest with Ben Hunt. There's a little chat around fucking Ben Hunt and your dogs. Mm. Mace must be pretty exciting. But let's start on the coach. Riles a lock and then does he bring his crew? I think this this is all on Rilesy. <clears throat> the job's his. If he wants it. If he wants him say the job's his if he wants it. And I think I the mail I'm hearing is that he does. Okay. Just got to be the deal's got to be yeah, right. It's just got to be right. It's got to have the right people involved. You need the security, like, don't you? Yeah, for a he, needs, of he needs to have the, his people there. Mm. You know, you can't say, "Hey, Rosie, you come in, and then we'll still have our, we'll have our trainers, we'll have our high performance, all that kind of shit." No, you bring your whole fucking team in. And Rosie's accumulated play uh, coaches and all that yep. kind of stuff. Who he'll get high performance people that he trusts from either Melbourne or the Roosters or people around the St George area, New South Wales, he knows, Australia. You know, he's going to. He's going to. You know, he's going to recruit all that kind of stuff as well. So I think it's up to Rosie, man, if he wants to fly the nest. Yep. This is a big – it's a big call for him. You know, he's he's 45 years old, I think. He's He's been around the assistant coach and role for, what, I reckon 10 years. Mm. Been involved in, what, four or five premierships at least. Played at the highest level, Australia, New South Wales, all that kind of stuff, grand final. He's done everything now. If he wants to coach – obviously, if you're going to be assistant coach for that long – you would have to have aspirations <clears throat> on being the head coach. Yeah. The fucking the, – everything is aligned. All the dominoes are fallen. Yeah. Craig Bellamy stays. Take it. Griffin's done. Take it, big Rosie. You know, take it. just take it, big boy. Big big four, five-year deal. Yeah, I'm with you. I think he's – our friends at the tab, they don't have a mark for it. He's probably a dollar ten favourite, Jason yeah, Rosie, if he wants it. You know. Um, the other news in and around it now, he doesn't have a clause in his contract, but there is unrest with obviously Benny Hunt. He had a really close relationship – with Anthony Griffin, and he has said he doesn't want to be part of the rebuild. So, mm. therefore, the rumours have started. And apparently, Brave said it last night on 360, Uncle Gus is keen. What would Ben Hunt do to a Bulldogs team, Mace? Is ben that, Hunt out. Is, ben is Hunt he that 31? missing piece? Is he that missing? He'd be 33. 33? Yeah. Still got, you know, 300 game or what, 15 origins, 15 tests. He's still in our origin still, teams. Still playing at a high level. He's the nine for Australia and Queensland. Yep. And halfback for for his club, I mean, I'm not speculating on anything. I just think he'd fit any team. I think any Correct. team would love him. Yeah, the Roos, who you you'd be an idiot and if if Ben Hunt just come available, and you don't have a halfback. Were you going to put him in the Roosters there for a second? I was going to say the Chooks yeah. might. Hey, the Chooks. Were I, wouldn't be I bet surprised. the Chooks were chasing him. I wouldn't be surprised. The Vets the get him furious. over the line. Yeah. Someone Cooper tossed, Cronk those last couple of years. Someone tossed this up to that me was in a DMs piece. a couple of uh, weeks ago and said, "How? Um, what's your thoughts on this? Sam Walker for Sam Walker and a player for Ben Hunt at the Dragons about three or four weeks ago. So obviously it coincided with the Dragons' form. They weren't playing well. Anthony Griffin's been a dead man walking for a while now. He's finally sacked. And then you go to Sam Walker who can grow with Jaden Sullivan, Talatel Mone, Tyrell Sloan, just this young core that can come through. The more together. you talk, the more it sounds good. It didn't sound all that bad. It right? doesn't sound bad. Yeah. Just but it depends Sam if Ben Hunt wants to go to, to the <coughs> Roosters. And it depends, it depends if, if Sam they, Walker wants to go the other way. And it depends well. on this. Mm. Have He's to be on a fair wicket. He's on a fair wicket down there. He's on a mill. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So he's one of uh, you know, ten players on a mill. And the he's you know, I mean, like I'm not sure what Gus is up to, but like you'd be Obviously, the best interests of our club. You'd have to be, forward, have, you'd have to be making phone calls. You'd have you? to be an idiot not to. He's um, he ain't. It's not a kid that yeah. He's not an eighteen-year-old kid. He's tried and tested. He's played at the highest level. Um, yeah, you'd be. It'd be a privilege to have him play mm. for the Bulldogs. He'd yeah, be, big word. Privilege. He'd be um, anyone. Any team would be privileged. Everyone privileged. would be privileged to have him in their team. Yeah. He's a premier seven. Yeah, he's a top three seven in the game. I'd love to. I'd love for him to get a, a, a comp too. You know, just off the back of the 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 grand final loss, obviously. And when was it? Two thousand fifteen. You know, he might be the missing piece to us. You know, we're on the hey, we're on that way. Mm. Yeah, you are. And um, you know, imagine him him being that part. Him being the missing piece. 
You know, we've got some players coming in next year. So it'd be interesting. But that's not – I don't make those decisions. That's why the big dog, <clears throat> he makes those decisions. Yeah, yeah it's always the big – It's always the, Uncle Gus. Hey, big Uncle Gus. The Gus father. The, the Gus father. father. All right, before we get into NRL preview, uh, Cultural Choice Association – have started a campaign, Boots for Brighter Future in 2023. So a bit of a background. Uh, after the sudden and devastating passing of his younger cousin in 2017, proud uh, Gamilaroy, sorry if I've got that wrong, Connor, man Connor Watson and his family felt motivated to take action to raise awareness around the staggering statistics of youth suicide in Indigenous communities. Connor approached the NRL with the idea of engaging at risk Indigenous youth to create artwork on the football boots of NRL players to be worn during the annual NRL Indigenous round and auctioned off to the public with the funds going back into supporting the program. This was Boots for Brighter Futures. This is how Boots for Brighter Futures was born, an initiative that seeks to start conversations on and off the field around the issues of Indigenous youth suicide and provides the young people at risk of becoming a statistic with an opportunity to express themselves and their story through art. So during the 2023 program, participants were given the space to share their own stories and express their sense of pride and identity through artwork. This artwork will feature on the football boots of 43 NRL players in the 2023 NRL Indigenous Round. The participating players come from eight different clubs, Sydney Roosters, Melbourne Storm, Canterbury Bulldogs, Newcastle Knights, Manly Seagulls, South Sydney Rabbitohs, New Zealand Warriors, and Brisbane Broncos. The auction, at the conclusion of the 2023 NRL Indigenous Round, the football boots painted through the P. Sorry, BFBF program will be available for auction with all proceeds going back to the program. You will be able to bid on the boots at ccai.org.au from Thursday 18th, 18th of May. We'll put the link in our bio for this episode. We'll also share a link and we're going to collaborate with Connor Watson. Connor Watson doing great uh, things um, for his indigenous community, yeah, as well. man. Just after we spoke to Joe on the, you seen well. Payne Haas's boots? They're grouse. Eh? Oh man! I got I got Paddy Carrigan. He sent me a picture of uh, Paddy Carrigan's and um, and Payne Haas's as well. To have a look at it. so those top ones are Paddy's. Yeah, man, they oh, look legit. sick. And the and the second ones are Payne's as well. So uh, Connor, um, he unfortunately he couldn't be here tonight. He's um, He's had, had a training session, um, but he couldn't make it. But um, he does some great things. I'd love to get him on the show. Yeah, great He'd definitely things be coming on. Community. And uh, it's just look again, not only proud of what he's doing, but just proud that you know we've got the boys, you know, reaching out to us and and keen to be doing stuff with us. Whether it be Connor Watson, yeah, Nico mad. promoting um, the potty, um, we've got some more, you know, guests coming up as yeah. well. Um, you know, we did the collaboration with with. Um, and the golf, oh yeah, and the golf's coming up as well. So we've got um, some fucking things happening, people. Yeah, so big got, things the, happening. The golf show will be dropping tomorrow. Our first episode. I went up and played up in Brisbane with Adam Reynolds, Reese Walsh, and Jackie Reed. Had a bit of fun. Two more Ambrose for this version of the show. So did you look? At, did you look into his eyes while she's? Oh, bro. You'll see. There's some pictures. <laughs> Wait till you get the pictures. Me and him were partners. He gets <clears> sorted. Me. I was driving next to him for a bit, and I was like, looked over and I go, fucking glamour. <laughs> <laughs> you're what, fucking are you so nine? what are you so fucking hot for? <laughs> All right, NRL round 12 preview is brought to you by our friends at the tab. These odds are accurate as of the 17th of May. 17th of May at 5 p.m. So we're going to kick it off with the first game, the Bronx at home to the Penrith Panthers. Mates, can they bounce back? Our friends at the tab have the home team as underdogs, $3 with Penrith Panthers $1.40. The line is minus 8.5, and, and people have been coming for the start, mates. So people like the plus 8.5 about the Broncos. Obviously, wow. the big news, Adam Reynolds is being rested after suffering a Category 2 head knock when he landed heavily on his head and neck in Melbourne. Melbourne. No changes for the premiers after a big win against the Roosters. Well, that's how much that's how much he holds in that team, Reynolds. I agree. For them to to, to blow out to that much money, and then pretty much saying you don't really have a chance, and you're playing against the Panthers, who pretty much set the standard last week. That's the best I've seen a team play all year for eighty minutes. Last so, time auditions for all of these Origin players, yep. and there's going to be multiple. So, who steps up the most in this game, most? I think Reese Walsh, simply because of what KP did last week. Mm. 
Reese Walsh needs to carve Penrith to bits and win the game. To even be a chance? To be a chance. Mm. Because if he's not starting, he's not on the bench because of Harry Grant. And you can't lose – you can't have two little, two little fellas on the bench like that. So he's either starting, KP's on the bench. Does KP get to the bench? No. No. Because of Harry Grant. It's one or the other. It's one or the other. So Reese Walsh, I think the most pressure is on that kid. He needs an MOM performance. Everyone else I think that we're talking about, I mean like even Capewell and, you know, he, he – he, He's a chance to be in there. Flegler will be thinking, fuck, I need a proper game here. Yep. I need to, I need to go to Isaiah Yo. Because Isaiah Yo's out, he's our dude. Yep. He's our dude. So um a couple other players there, but not not much. Most of those guys, I reckon they're Jerome. You know, Jerome, another big game. Jerome. Help. He needs Or is he already in? You think he's I think he's in? already in. And you just always wonder, like this one game before Origin, and the, you don't you don't fucking want to go in there. With a little bit of a soft game, well, you this, want to fucking go balls in. I think this is the perfect game for both. Yes, because you know, like you said, Mace, you've again. I always go back to you. You've played at this level. You probably don't want to be a, playing a team like the West Tigers going into it. Going, no. Fuck! I hope I don't get injured. Because there's players that are going to be featuring in both these teams across the board. It's the perfect fucking yeah. audition. You you want to go out and go as hard as you can. Even Katoni Stags. Yeah, against Crichton, he's still a chance, man. Do you know what I mean, Peachy? Not peachy, like I mean, like he's this, this back line is going to be killing it. Crichton, I mean, well, Toto, well, Luai, Tony Stags will, get a, will be going against Peachy, so yeah. it's a good opportunity for him to because I like Peach. Peach is very versatile, but he's not an out and out center, so it's a good opportunity for Katoni. You know, Liam Martin. Liam Martin wants another cracking game. Well, Who's Liam to Martin say he's a lock? Yeah, I, I I do. I think everyone else does, but like he's like he's probably thinking he said I fucking need another game. Yeah, I need I need M O M. He he's so crazy. He probably doesn't think he's a lock. I need. To go at fucking Flegler and Capewell and Carrigan. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I'm fucking going at him. Do you know what I mean? So I'm like, this is, and this is right. Like, Isaiah Yo and Carrigan, pretty much, you know, hey, they're two best locks in the game. Yeah. They're going to play at a high level no matter what. They're just, and those, you want, you students. want this, you want this game going into Oregon. Yes. As hard as it sounds, like, it's still a fucking NRL game. Doesn't matter if you're playing against the Tigers or, or Parramatta or some mm. other team. You'd rather this team. Yeah, I agree. And on Thursday too. So you get a bit more break than someone who's playing on Great Sunday. point. So they can proper go at it. They can go at it. Broncos or Penrith? Penrith. Adam Reynolds, sorry. I agree. Adam Reynolds was playing. Fucking, I might have been going the other way. What about with the eight and a half start? Do I don't really understand all that sort of so shit. So like they've got to win by like more than eight points, you think? Penrith will? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yep. Yeah. St. George Illawarra Dragons. Off, off the back of the big Anthony Griffin news versus Sydney Roosters, the Dragons are two dollars seventy five underdogs, dollar forty five at uh, way for the Roosters. The line is minus six and a half. Uh, Zach Lomax has been recording to the centres, mace at the expense of Max Fiungai. Skipper Ben Hunt then returns to halfback to make way for Jacob Little, who comes back in. Moses and Bai drops out. Jaden Sullivan goes to the bench. Um, as for the Roosters, Joey uh, Manu is out. So Luke Kiry moves to 5'8", and our boy Mudders Hutchinson comes in to 7. Egan mm. Butcher also returns. But Satili Tupanua is the one starting from the bench. So Egan, Bu- Egan Butcher goes on the bench. Yeah, nice. How do you see this game? Do you think... Uh, oh, no, it's going to be tough. They beat the shit out of each other last time. Yeah, it's only three weeks ago. People are bagging the roosters. They're saying it's disjointed. They're saying all this shit. They're starting to question the coach. They don't like that shit. They're going to come out and shut the fucking everybody up and put a fucking cricket score on St. George. That's, you think so? That's what... Hey, that, Both that, these teams are under that's, pressure. That's what you're thinking, and yeah. that's what I'm, that's that's what you're thinking. If you if you if you're the Roosters, they're they're going to come out and go. No, we're still that team. Fuck off. Shut up, everyone. We love our coach. We've got the players here. We've still got that culture. And I think St George, on the other hand, like I think there's like a when a, when a coach gets sacked, there's some ridiculous yeah. stat about them bouncing back about teams, seventy uh, or eighty percent. They win that game. Nah, there's something is, weird. Someone someone squashed this, I believe. Someone when people were in the Rando. comments will let us know. Yeah, Rando or something hit this. Apparently, it's not as much as you think. No? Nah? Yeah. All right. But, like, everyone was the same. Every, I was the same. Like, I think last year I was looking at it, I was like, oh, someone, they're going to bounce back before, and then someone hit me with a stat that it's not all that common. I think Brandon, Brandon Smith needs – he needs yep. an MOM game. Yep. Just to show everyone that he's still that guy. Um, yeah, he needs a big game for sure. Yeah, Teddy, Teddy would want a big game. Everybody who's going to be playing Origin – Teddy especially, he wants to shut everyone up and he wants to come into Origin with some good form. Lindsay Collins is going to be – hey, Lindsay Collins was playing last year. Mm. 
We didn't even have him in the team then. True. Yeah, Lindsay. He's, uh, I he's, had Lindsay Collins a couple of weeks I'm ago. I'm pretty sure you were starting last year. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure. Well, maybe off the bench, but like, you know, um, Angus Crichton's still going to have it. You know, he might be thinking if I fucking get some really good minutes in here, they might put me on the bench. Who knows? Um, it's a tricky game, man. It's fucking it's a hard, tricky eh? game. Fuck, I'd, nearly the... even, I'd nearly even put a Jack Bird on the bench, man. Mm. I'd be close to picking Jack Bird on the bench. Jack Bird's played Origin before. Yep, yeah, he's fucking. He's about it too. He can play. He can play five eight. He can play lock. He can play anywhere in the back line. Or can he? Oh god, I can't change now. But you can change if you want. Um. Yeah, this would be a good game. But I just don't. I think the Roosters would just be like, you know what? Don't you dare! Don't don't come at our coach like that. Mm. This will be for the coach. Yeah, for Robbo. Yeah, boys doing it for Robbo. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, moving on to the second game of Friday night. This one's going to be a fucking do. South Ooh. Sydney, they love playing against Parramatta of recent mace. South are $1.37 favourites. Parramatta are $3.15. The line is 8.5, just the same as the Thursday night game. Uh, Tommy Burgess has not been named after being a late withdrawal last week. Jed Cartwright won't be available. Therefore, Daniel Saluka Fafida is the new man on the bench. Mitch Moses returns after missing round 11 with a concussion. Sean Lane, hamstring is out. So Bryce Cartwright moves into that starting spot. And Makahisi Makatoa joins the bench. Sean Russell was also on the wing for Hayes Dunster. Anyone, anyone stopping South at the moment? No OG? one's stopping South. No one, especially with this one game out. They're, they're not taking the foot off. Guys, you know, like Latrell and that, they all, as I said, like this game right here, the one before Origin, if you think you're borderline or even if you're locked in, you fucking want to be the best player on the field. Mm. That's, why they, that's why they're Origin players. Cody Walker, I'm thinking, you know, Cody Walker's not out of it. Yeah. He's not completely out Sorry, of the picture. Sorry, he's, he's, it wasn't until you just started saying Cody Walker, I was like, oh, he was, he was the guy that I forgot to put in where – if they decided to pick Cody Walker, man, like in, in you know in that fourteen, it's between like him, Nico, Cookie, or even at six, man. Fuck, there's probably no one in better touch this year in the six no. than him. He just never gets the raps because it's I don't know South Sydney. Uh, fuck it's, it. it's it's weird. Why? And, and, why he, and he has and he's played. He's older. He's played. Yeah. So the longevity is not yeah. going to be a, a like. Is he the future? Option. Is he the future? If he was twenty four, we'd be put. We'd be pushing more for 100%. him. But He'd he's be thirty two like years old. But well, Nico's, Nico's the future of the game, and like you know, you sort of got Luai, who's twenty four as well. Like they're all, they're they got ten years ahead of him, mm. you know. Where he started a little bit late. Campbell Graham's probably going to probably one of his best game. He's not a lock yet because he hasn't yeah, played. Yeah, I wouldn't say that. You in can't, his, you can't in say his head, lock. in his head, he's like, I'll fucking prove. And he's probably had that in his head all year. I'm an Origin player. I'm an Origin player. I just play Test football. I'm going to prove to you guys that I'm Origin. I'm going to push my way into the fucking team, regardless. And he's done that. Yep. We just you find me a position. That's what he's got. That's that's what he said the New South Wales selectors and the coaches. Get me a position. That's how good I am. Latrell just wants to be Latrell. Um what other forwards that we got? You know, big junior wants to have a good game. That's about it. I mean, Cam Murray's gonna be doing Cam Murray things. Damien Cook. Jai Arrow. Jai Arrow. He's been really good the last couple of weeks, Jai Yeah. I saw him down in Maruba Junction. Fuck, he's a thick boy. Yeah. Thick. Yeah, he's a Fucking nugget. Man. Solid, man. Damien Cook needs nearly an MOM game. Hmm. Because yep. of, because of the Appy, because look at the little thing that if you got Nico Hines, Appy and Cook, that yep. can't happen. If Nico wasn't there, then it would have been a straight it's a bit nine like, fourteen. It's a bit like Walsh, yeah, Walshy, Ben Hunt, and KP. Mm. It's you just you just can't have three Someone's small blokes like out. that. Someone's going to miss out. So yeah. Cook needs an MON game. I think Souths win and they win well. I think Souths pump them. All right, first game of Super Saturday: Cronulla Sharks at home. To the Newcastle Knights, the odds are dollar thirty-five about Cronulla, three dollars twenty-five about the Newcastle Knights. The line again is that tricky number of eight and a half. The tab's loving that. Um, no changes. Oh wait, I missed that one. Oregon Kafusi will return for Cameron McMe- McMe- Cameron McInnes. It feels weird saying Cameron. I'm reading Cameron. straight from the Just script. Can. That's why Just Cam can. McInnes, who suffered a broken hand. Prop Braden Hamlin Ueli though they said, has been sorry, named sorry. in the extended squad. He'll be out for four weeks, I reckon. Um, McInnes, I reckon he's back in two. Yeah, hundred. He's a fucking proper yeah, dog. Dev. Strap it up, he's shut dev. up. I'm replying. Coach Adam O'Brien has been named the same seventeen. Jack Heverington shifts from lock to prop with Leo Thompson. That's the only change. So, but that's a fucking great thing for Jack. He hasn't started a game in nearly a year, mm. so it's good to see him work his way back into the into the starting side. You know what? Who's who is going to be in the running for for Origin here? KP, Nico. Nico Hines, and fucking that's about it. 
There's no one else. Frizzell's probably like he's Frizzell, he's, he's, yep. he's done. You reckon Frizzell's there? I think Frizzell's a big Daniel chance. Daniel Fights, Saifidi? Yeah, the Saifidi brothers, they're but still, I wouldn't They're still going to be in that top. In, they'll be, so if you've got 25 players there, right, they're both in that. Yes. you just got to select 17 from that. Correct. Yeah. So I think they're probably going to be on that board. I think both of them on that they're board on that 25. Board. Um, and Gags. Yep. But that's about it. So um, oh, Ronnie Molotalo, he's New Zealand now, isn't he? Yeah, he can't play. It sucked. Yeah. How close he was the other year. Well, he's going to play. For, he's he's fucking he's in, in the, the team. team. Yeah. He would have I reckon he'd be a lock left he winger. He would be in the he, fucking he, 100% he, left side winger. He's a gun. Um, it's been a good game. Yeah, I think it'll be but closer. I, you know, I don't like, mind. I don't mind the. Uh, I don't mind the eight and a half about the Knights. Hmm. I would. Uh, Cronulla play a fucking really good brand of football. Mm. I like. I like Hamlin Llewellyn's back. He was a form prop at the game before he got injured. Yes. If he plays massive in mm. and he gets the momentum, yeah, rolling, Nicor is the best. When Nic- they're flowing like Nico Hox, Nico Hines's locks, it's very. They're probably one of the most beautiful teams to watch short in the sides you better fucking watch out they get to that numbers line they get on the 20 meter line they're the most dangerous fucking side mm-hmm. they look for that the 6-4 split or even if they got 3 they're going down even if they got 4 they're going down yeah mate they're that fucking good if they've got a big boy in who's there. your best um, back row if you had to choose your back row right now who's your two starters best starters in the competition um or you are you like Nikola? Fucking easy. Yeah. He's stay, he's my best. He's the best back row in the comp uh, at the moment. Uh, this year? Yep. Yeah. Right now. Probably as we him, speak right now. Probably him and uh, on form. Him and Fafita. Him, him and oh, I was going to say Hamole, but yeah. Hamole's had a couple of couple of weeks, weeks off with yeah. Fafita's. Like he's he's still he didn't jamming. Look, he didn't look right Hamole on the weekend. No. He looked like he was fucking struggling a bit. He got better as the game went on, but the start of the game he looked. He wasn't terrorizing. Mm. You know, oh, when you have those standards, when people see what you do and you how destructive also, you are, they keep throwing the ball and fucking. He's getting shit ball, and the and now they're game planning for him. Yeah, they're putting that extra man. They're flipping an extra man. They're going in. They're coming at him real hard. So, I'm going Cronulla. Teague Wilton is my man as well. I love Cronulla. I love, fucking love the way they play. Yeah. I love it, mate. Yeah. They are gr- aggressive. They all run fucking hard like it's Cronulla their last home, run. But give me the eight and a half start. How about that? Yeah. Right, I let's like settle that. on that. All right. The second game is Super Saturday, 5.30 p.m. The West Tigers are at home to the North Queensland Cowboys. Wow. These odds don't seem right. Two dollars thirty-five about the Tigers, dollar sixty about the Cowboys. Mm. Uh, with Someone's a plus out. three and a half start. Obviously, no changes for Tim Sheens. Just the one change, as my screen <coughs> goes away on me here. What's that? Just the one change for with Jermaine Tanoa Brown. He misses a game. Riley Price takes his spot. Steve and Jason, Price is young kid. Yeah, he's back in. Good Jason kid. Tomalolo is expected back on deck next week. All right. Jeez, I tell you what, I like. I mean, the Tigers have been playing well. Don't get me wrong. Dollar sixty about the boys. Yeah, I, I like the way the Cowboys are going. I like the way they're playing. Yeah. yeah. Um, Dearden's killing it. Townsend's are killing it. Their back line. Pet Hegu looks sharp again. Val is, Holmes. Is this the Leichhardt? Leichhardt. I like this. Leichhardt. Is it Leichhardt? Yeah. 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 Two thousand five Grand Final. They always make a big deal about that. Yeah. Hylam Lukey is my boy. <sighs> When My Nanai boy, gets back, Cohen right. Hess has been outstanding. Grace Robson, they've been playing good, man. Helam, Helam, Lukey. Oh, Helam. Oh, Helam, Helam, Lukey. Helam, Lukey. Helam, Lukey. Someone right. was calling him Helium on the weekend. Helium, Helium, Lukey. Uh, yeah, he's been killing it. Ruben Cotter's back. Ruben Cotter will be looking for a man in the match performance. He wants. He's he's not a lock in for Origin. I reckon he's a lock. I, I'm just saying. He didn't play. He missed the last two games last year. Yeah. And yeah, he played one game, got me. Got, played one or two games, got MOM. He missed one game. game two. Yep. No, he did miss game three. I think he missed yeah, three. Yeah, he, he did. Tom Gilbert played. Yeah. He missed, he's played one game, no, one Tom MOM. Tom Gilbert played to start. So who did he start over Kate? Well, yeah, someone. Um, so Tua Lung, you'd be looking for his best games, Val Holmes. Yep. Cole Felt was still thinking that, you know, he might be in there somehow yep. if there's an injury or yep. something like that. Yep. Felt, um, did Yep. Dean, like he's sorry for Dean. He's next. He's got next for Next him. man up. But he's he got might next for him in the halves. Five years for Munster. Well, DCE's got a year left. Two years. Yeah. Max. Fuck. How long can DCE play for? <laughs> he's fucking 34. God. Um, yeah, I've got. Uh, I've got the good thing is for Dearden, at the same time, you're probably going to get Cherry and Hunty probably finishing the same series. Mm. If it's not next year, it'll be the year after, you'd think 100%. 
Then you got Munster for another five. And then yeah. he has to go to the seven. Hopefully, Harry's no seven. for another ten. Hey, ten. Kalen for another ten. <laughs> Crazy, eh? Fuck, they've got some good Cowboys, players. thirteen plus. Yeah, so oh, not thirteen. Cowboys, Tigers have been competitive. I'll go Cowboys. I'll go Cowboys one to twelve. All right, uh, moving on to the last game of Super Saturday. Dolphins at home to the Melbourne Storm up at Suncorp. The Dolphins are two dollars ninety OG, dollar forty two mm. about the Melbourne Storm, and the line is just under eight and a half for this one, plus seven and a half with our friends at the tab. Um, right. Jesse Bromwich and Mudders Lee. Brinko Variety is back uh, with Valence to Mudders. <laughs> Mudders to Vada, sorry. <laughs> and Puasa Fa Masuli drops out. Ray Stone returns. And Mark Nichols is 18th man, so I dare say he'll play uh, if he's 18th some man. Some origin, like some dudes here. So Tom Gilbert's going to be in the run. Felice Gafusi, Harry Grant, Christian Welsh, uh, the Munster, Coates. Who else? Tab the hammer? That's the it. Hammer. They're all going for yeah. origin spots. Yeah. Be a good game this so That's what I'm saying. It's going to be a be decent really game. game. Yeah. Everyone else will be looking at this going, oh, this will be a shit game. Melbourne should win. No way. No, it's not going to be it's no. proven that way. Nelson Osofa Solomona has been Nelson. named in the starting side because he dropped back to the bench last week for Tui Kamakamitha, who goes back to the bench. Yeah, uh, what do you think about this? I'm fucking it's a tricky game, man. Dolphins are so hard. To, I'm all, it's almost just safe just going the Dolphins start all year because then you get them if they win and then you obviously get them if they start. You get them with the start as well. You might as well take the points if you've got them think, with the yeah, Dolphins this year. Yeah. The quality of of, um, of Melbourne is just going to be too much. Just because of Cam Munster just looked ridiculous. Hughes looked ridiculous. What about all the Melbourne old boys? You think Felice is yes. going to come after the Prez? He's going to yes. be on the same side yes. as the Prez? Or would he be like, I don't want to break your ribs because we need you for origin. Wait, he, he, doesn't, Do you, he doesn't give a I shit. Know. Felice, like, hey, hey, he bashed hey, Those Queenslanders, one. no, but those Queen, hey, cheese, hey, he's Kiwi. Mm. Queenslanders don't, hey, I reckon, I reckon if he has the opportunity to smack the shit out of Munster, I bet it's not as hard as he hits those other blokes. No, I don't reckon. I fucking swear to God. Felice is a dog. Fucking man. these Queenslanders stick together that hard and he wants Munster at 100%. <laughs> and if he fucking broke Munster's <laughs> ribs, <laughs> fucking, you know, wait, side eye massively at yeah. fucking training going, what did you do that for? Just tackle him. I, but I dare say, see, Chez is, I mean, Prez is going to give him a chance too because Chez Prez Hey, is he goes. Him. He'll dig in. He'll go. He'll, t- he'll test you. Yeah. And, he'll be, and he'll be probably going, don't you fucking hit me. Yeah. Don't, right. do me don't do me <laughs> like that. Don't you do me like that because we're going to fucking win. Well, we're going to win. I reckon Queensland. Do him like that. He'll have his fucking Queensland jersey underneath his Melbourne one and underneath his <laughs> fucking Dolphins. They'll have their training shirt or some shit. <laughs> Hit him with the Melbourne Storm. Yeah. <laughs> what about this, bro? Fuck, remember, hey, what remember about this, that? bro? Remember that? <laughs> what, two, three? How many would we Fuck. Play short, boom. How many, how many tries you want to go with for? <laughs> um, Melbourne. Melbourne? Melbourne. Fuck. But it'd be a fucking good game. Yeah, this I be, agree. Usually I'd be like, nah, fucking, this would be a boring game, but no. All right, moving on to the first game of Sunday, your dogs, the Bulldogs Yowks. versus the Gold Coast Titans. In form, Gold Coast Titans. They are. Fucking out of score points. 26 of them, mate, exactly, for imagine the last five fucking score, weeks. Imagine if they score 26 again. We'll have a look. I'm going to go and look at the markets for exact points. Last five games. Let me see. Match. Where is it? Pick your total. Maybe it's not up. Match. Team. They're going to be good, man. They've got a decent team and they're playing well. I can find it. I oh, margins. Oh no, totals. There we go. It'll be in totals, I think. But total, total exact points, home total points over and home total points. Who's that? There we go. I'm just looking at some markets here. Exact points away home. How do you find this shit? Because I'm a fucking degenerate. <laughs> oh um, no, this is margins though. Total. Oh no, this is totals. Eleven dollars. The Gold Coast Titans are playing for exactly twenty-six points, I believe. Eleven bucks they're paying. Total points is that margin? No, it's totals. All right, it's totals. Yes. Yeah, boys. We've had a good. We've had a good week. Yep. It's a decent week. I think it was a bit of a one of those moments. It was last your most week. underwhelming uh, last week? Of the year, your, there's been some home boys. truths said this week. Good. Some um some very constructive. Conversations going on. Yep. Honesty, all that kind of stuff, which can only build trust and build the culture where we want to head in the future. Um, and I just, I think you'll, you'll see a different side this week. Okay. 
Honestly, I honestly think I think um, one of, you know one of those games are defining sort of moments in your in your year. Yep. Well, win, this is a game. Or, win or loss, it's just I think it was that Warriors defeat because that was the only team that was the only side that I'm like, like fuck we got beat. Yeah. Like we didn't even look like winning most other games. I'm like. We're a fucking chance. There were some We're positives in them. We're a chance. You can find some positives. things out of it, yeah. Now it's like that was the only game I'm like, fuck. And I think they all were like that. Mm. You know, it was hard seeing the boys after the game. Video session would have been tough. Video sessions was tough. It was – Gold Coast hard. Titans just went through it as well with the Newcastle Knights. Yeah. They were in that game up until about the 50-minute mark before KP went bang, bang. Yeah. They're, and uh, took the game away from them. Some really good performances still. Some, some So much positives to come out of it. They can score points on anyone, man. Yeah. So, they're da- they are dangerous. They can, I reckon they go into every game going – we can, we can win. score on anyone. We can we score. Just we, stop. Just gotta, we just need to fucking defend good. If they can, so it's only a matter of time. Literally, if they can prevent a team from scoring more than twenty six, they win. Yes, and that's fucking. Good. <laughs> if you can stop that, yeah. fucking most teams can, right? Yeah. So Bulldogs, um, can you so score boys, more than? Can you score more than twenty six? Yeah, I think we can. Okay, I'm gonna go to the Titans. Fair enough. I just um, think it's one of those. I think it's one of those guys. Plus, we got the bye. Ooh, after it. So that's like, nice. I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure whether – I'm trying to think back when I had the bias. Like I was probably more planning what the fuck I was going to do after that night. <laughs> but I wasn't thinking, fuck, let's just go out and let get – I expected to win anyway. Yeah. You just win, get the buy as well. It's different then, now for these win, guys, man. They, get don't, the, they don't get to know. enjoy a buy like we win, used to. Win, get the buy, yeah. fucking who cares? Yeah. But like get the win, first of all, not yeah. worry about the two points you get for the buy. Yeah. Just like get out there, get the just get the fucking win. Yeah. But back in our day, because like, we're, we're just thinking, where are we, where are we going? Where are we going? <laughs> Half time, where are we going? <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks ago, where are we going? <laughs> <laughs> All right, last game. Oh. My Manly Seagulls are underdogs against Canberra, who are at home. Our friends at the tab have the Canberra Raiders dollar fifty eight favourites, and the Manly Seagulls two dollars forty underdogs. Mm. Last game of Sunday, last chance to see Tommy Trevojevic in live action. <laughs> Uh, Josh Papali'i, Hudson Young, yeah. uh, a, a few that we horse bra that we mentioned. The bra. Um, sorry, if the bra, if the, sorry, if the let bra. Me just go, let me just go. Who's, the bra gets who's, the horse match? Is for the, he gets a man the matches in. Zach Wolford is uh, out, but then Danny Levi comes back from broken jaw. Tom Starling will start. Danny Levi off the bench. Jakey Javoyevich big in. He returns early. Josh Schuster is also back at six. But then you lose Josh Alawai and Kelma Tolangi are both facing extended time on the bench. Ben Trevojevic moves into second row. He looked pretty good for him, actually, when he came in the second row on the weekend. Sam- Samuela Fainu and Ben Conan are the new names on the interchange. Mace, if if not now, then, then when for Manly. Mm. And uh, and they're coming up against a very hard task. Canberra are feeling themselves at the moment. If the Horsburgh gets over Jake Trevojevic and just ragdolls him, does he get in the origin? Well, no one's going to ragdoll no, Jake. No, no, that's what, boy, that's what but I'm saying. But if he has a good performance against Jake, if he goes at Jake and he fucking gets him and makes maybe if he if he can beat Jake in a one on one battle yeah. and get through those fucking shoulders of steel, pick him in Origin. Yeah, I doubt it. He's Queenslander. I don't really care. But that's his thing. Taniella Paseca was fucking outstanding last week. When he came off the bench, yeah. The second he was outstanding. Was really good. He was Chess outstanding. Was really good too, actually. Shout out to me, mate. I don't think I never, I don't really give Ches credit enough because he's a mate, but in a couple of, you know, awful, good, awful performances for the Manly of recently, he's been going really hard. I think, you know, Big Papa, Ola Kowatu, Hudson Young, Horsburgh, Jay Trebojevic, they're all going for it. Mm. This pack will be – they'll be going at each other. Ola Kowatu is not a lock. He's not a lock in the team yet. No, I don't think he's a lock Do either. you know what I mean? Like he Two needs, weeks ago, I reckon he was a lock. He's not a lock anymore. You know, um, I hope to God that he, he's, he finds a spot on the bench because he'd be destructive. He'd be, he's built for origin. Hudson Young will be going at it. Yeah. He'll be thinking, fuck, that's my bench spot. Those are the, those dogs, they'll be facing spot. each other too. Yeah, that's my bench spot. Um, the horse bro, he like if you know, he'd be probably happy if he, he's in that twenty two man if, if he, even if he gets mentioned. I'm saying he's gonna be in the side because they're fuck it, it's Queensland. You know what I mean? He has to be playing he has to have three years of how he's playing to get into that team. Yeah. It's just a good thing that he's playing that good. But real talk, he's probably nowhere near it. Papa Lee, he's about that shit. He's about it. He's an origin player. He's going to be fucking trying to go, you know what? He's going to be going at Ola Kowatsu and he's going to be going at Jake Trebojevic. You, you know, know what I mean? They just love you, it. You know a player to watch out for in this game? Who? The ultimate fuck you. Have a big game right now just before. Yeah, fucking Cherry Evans. No. Nah. Jack? No. Nah. Jack. Jackie boy. Jack. This he, comes out, he, he comes out and has a big game against Manly, against Turbo, against fucking Jakey, Chez, 
and it's almost like fuck you New South Wales like yeah I should because be I say. believe I'm you mean you're on the same page where he's like yeah you fucked around with us too much man yeah. I'm over this shit I'm just, you know going to concentrate head, on the head fuck you. Josh Schuster big game really big game for him he's going up against a fucking dog Jack Whiten yeah he's about that shit mm. he's going to test him a lot. Different, want, uh, different know, edges, but like, both gonna, left, but, but yeah. he attacks both sides, Jack. Yeah. He's going to go, but he, I think he'll take it personal and he'll fucking try and hunt him, especially in defence. Um, Josh Schuster's got some skills. He's, he's got he's got a lot of people to shut up as well. Mm. I hope he's what been in the, and I, around that hope fucking he's club. Been, I hope he's been in the lab working on his body, working on his toughness, working on his fitness, so he can just shut everybody up. If he plays awful against Canberra and they absolutely school him, because this Canberra side is ready. Mm. This Canberra They're side, this, this Canberra side's five They're in a row. They're hot They're, down that's in the fucking, fucking team. That's the form team in the fucking comp at the moment. Top three form team. And if yeah. he plays, they probably the. the yeah, they'd be close to the. It's Penrith. The, yeah, it's Penrith. It's the Broncos. Canberra's there. South and South. Yeah. Not in that order. Not in that yeah. order. So they're a top four team at the moment. They are, they're playing yeah. like a top four team. Yep, in the last month for sure. Yeah. So I think if he can perform well and just do his job, don't worry about all the fancy shit. Do the tough stuff. Who are you going? Canberra? Canberra. Yeah. yeah. Easy. Yeah, I'm going Canberra too. Quite well. All right. It's time for Chasing the Great for Eight. As I said last week, five from seven. So let's mm. get into it this week. We're chasing centers this week, OG. Kicking it off, Brisbane Broncos at home. To the Penrith Panthers, I said he's the most clutch player in the last 18th months. Give me Stephen Crichton. So George Illawarra Dragons for Sydney Roosters. He just got back in the team. He wants to have a statement game. He's coming up against an underwhelming centre pairing at the Roosters with Joey Manu missing. Give me Zach Lomax. Mm. South Sydney versus Parramatta. I think they're going to dominate that left edge that they love going to. The obvious one is Alex Johnson. Give me just inside him, Isaiah Tass. Cronella versus Newcastle. I'm going to go the guy who's got the freshest of all ink. So, therefore, I'm going... The best. Barley Bradman. <laughs> we love you, bestie. We love you, bestie. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been... Honestly, if I was in your team, at Which, least... I, what was his fresh ink? Was it Because he's got a full leg tat. Anyway, was it his arm? Fuck, I don't know. He's got heaps of ink. Yeah, I've seen that story. So, what did he do? So this 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 chat that he's he's looked after a family over there. He met some people over there and then went back over and helped oh, good him on him. build a village. Yeah, good on him. Got some ink. Got and some went ink. to Mississippi and had a fucking couple as well. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm telling you, Bradman, if I was fucking still playing in on you, I would have been there with you, don't worry. 100. West Tigers versus North Queensland. I'm going my son, Petahiku. He doesn't score that often, but I just feel like Tigers he can cross. Dolphins versus Melbourne. What did I say before? Left side, Cam Munster. Right side, Felice Cafusi. Who's going to be coming for him? Ah, James Munster plays short. Jazzy Olam. Try. Ooh. Bulldogs versus Gold Coast. Titans. Against the Brinko. Against Brinko. Brinko's on that right edge, isn't he? Yeah. He's, he's, yeah, Brinko's right side center. Yeah, and you and Aiken's left. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Yeah, Mudders Lee. <clears throat> All right, <laughs> Bulldogs versus Gold Coast Titans. It's going to be a score fest. Oh, no, no, even sorry. though the Titans. I don't care what you say. They fucking can't like it when you call them Mudders. Mudders. No, they love it. They love it. They love it. Yeah, the boys. This is the couple that I haven't hit up. <laughs> bro, I even hit up like I fucking love it. Latrell was my fullback two years ago. Um, I'm going to people's like names, calling them Mudders because yeah. it goes Mudders Lee yeah. and Mudders. It's mudders. <laughs> it just rolls off the tongue beautifully. That's why. Um, Bulldogs versus Gold Coast. I'm going to go Paul Alamotti. Yeah. I'm going to go your dog on yeah. the left edge. I think he can score some points. Uh, I heard they... that Pereira's not playing. Ooh. And Shop is Ooh. in. Ooh. Shop. Oh, okay. Aaron Shop. So there they might be go. like putting him in because of the old club or yep. that sort of shit. Yep. He'll be pumped up for sure. All right. Cam Pereira's, I think, I think Pereira might have an injury or some shit later. Or maybe it's a yeah, ta it tactical be. thing. I'm not sure. No, Pereira, no way. Because Pereira, Pereira's a fucking. No young. way I'm, they're dropping Cam Pereira. As soon as they it's said injury. putting yeah. fucking Khan out, I'm like, for Shop, fuck. No way. Um, there's no way they're dropping Camper. He's been on fire. Uh, Canberra versus Manly, he's been on fire. He's been one of the more underrated players in the competition last month, Matty Tomoko. Yeah, massively. All right, so that's my grateful eight for this week. A fucking, come on, center of attention, baby. That's the fucking thing. Let's go. <laughs> Are All you right. mainly sorry? Are you mainly picking left side centers as it goes? No, nah, they go. Both no, sides you don't. You I've don't looked, care, right? No, I've looked at. I've looked at uh, sides that I've. Think so did you pick Campbell Graham in one of those? Yeah, no, no, as a task for this week. But Ooh. I've had Campbell Graham before. Zach Lomax, uh, Stephen Crichton's right side. Right. Bradman Best left. Petters right. Juzzy left. Alamotti left. Tomoko right. 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 
All right. All right. Well, let's Go get the levels, levels Punters Club Bets Friends Channel Special. You can find this on the Tab app. Go on the Bets Friends Channel and find our channel. Let me start that again. Fuck, what do I always have to do that? All right. Let's get into our Levels Punters Club Bets Friends Channel Special. You can that find is a this fucking mouthful. Tab- <laughs> yeah, it is. It is a mouthful. OG, so let me get to see who I've got this week. <laughs> I've got Souths again. I had them last week. They're on fire. They're my favorite team to get on. Give me Souths minus eight and a half. And I'm also going to throw in Jerome Hughes to score in the first 60 minutes against the Dolphins. That wow. equals... $10 from our friends at the tab. The traders, that's a specific odds just for us. And it's a max bet of $25. So good luck to everyone who follows and make sure you get in the channel. As always, we want everyone to be playing safe during this footy season. So please keep front of mind, what are you really gambling with? And if you need free and confidential support, call 1-800-858-858 or visit Gambling Help online.org.au I'll say that again because I stuffed up a little bit gamblinghelponline.org.au and just remember you can find all our current LPC bets under the Bets Friends banner on the Tab app OG, good preview Origin 10 done, see you next week enjoy the footy